And I'm told that this was right here over at Machasia. The Iron Dome went off and there was, I don't know, it was just a shame nobody got hurt, but um, there, there is action going on <laughs> out there. Um, so here, it, if we hear a siren, um, an introduction for Tisha Bava. If we hear a siren, so the most fortified areas of this uh, building are under the back and the sides as opposed to right here under the roof. So what everybody would want to do is go to the sides and also women um, in a dangerous place. So the women should come downstairs and sit under this back area. So there's three areas, <coughs> two areas for men one area for women, and Bezos Hashem, that won't happen, but uh, it just has to be um, announced. Um, okay. Kinos. Uh, everybody talks about the... Um, Fact that the Kara Alai Moed, the Tisha B'av's called the Moed. Moed usually is a yant of Moadim Lusimcha. Rabbi Yudin spoke about it last night. Almost all the Sfarim that you open speak about it. I speak about it. Like, why should Tisha B'av be called a Moed when here we are um, trying not to smile? <laughs> here we are sitting on the floor. We're Ba'avelus. We're, we're remembering all the tragedies of. Yisrael, like how is it a moed? And um, it's very interesting that even like today, that's a nitche. So, um, like if the pshat that it's a moed is that well, Mashiach is born on Tisha B'av. That's what Chazal say. Mashiach is born on Tisha B'av. Menachem So, um, okay. So that's like a happy aspect to Tisha B'av. So that we could have celebrated yesterday on Shabbos and then just push the Avelus forward. But no, the whole thing goes forward. The, the whole Moyed of Tisha B'av goes forward. So the, today also we didn't say Tachnun, so we can't even divide the days. So you see that the Tisha B'av Mitzat Atzmai unto itself is called a Moed. And um, everybody wants to know why. And you know, when it, when it, when it comes to Kinos, you know, uh, I'm, I'm honored and intimidated by the oilum that's here. Many people here tell me the chachamim and, uh, throughout the day. Uh, you know, thousands of people actually listen to it online. Um, everyone looking for a moment of uh, of Tisha B'av. But I have to say that um, to me, um, not only do I understand that Tisha B'av is a moed, um, but it's actually my favorite holiday. Um, simcha is very difficult to um, to explain, but if the point of a moed, which of course means to meet, vad base vad hit vadut, a moed means you're meeting with Hashem. So yes, when you're when you're a regel, like you're going to the base of mikdash, which we will talk about, base of mikdash we had, the base of mikdash we lost, and of course it's a moed. But um, there's a, also another kind of moed which we're meeting with Hashem, and that's the moed of Tisha B'av. Uh, Tisha B'av is, is, to me, a very, very uh, spiritual experience. It's the only time, really, where I, I sit down, you know, usually for the nine days, even a little bit more, and examine not just the words of the kinos, which are very, very difficult and very, very complicated, words and what chazalm are they referring to and what part of history are they referring to and what part of Kabbalah are they referring to. But um, it's, it's somehow in order for me to be able to do Tisha B'av, I have to sort of think um, all of Jewish history. I have to think about the ups and downs of Jewish history, more important. History is history. I have to think about um, go right back to basics and think about why did Hashem create us? More important, why did Hashem create the world altogether? And why is it broken? And, you know, sometimes, you know, let's say you're having an argument with somebody 
and uh, you know you could have this simcha together and that simcha together, and you go on this vacation together, and you have this uh, you have this meal together. But sometimes there's um, and it, sometimes it comes about through um, discomfort and through machlekes. But sometimes there's a moed, a different kind of meeting on a different type of level. That's only possible in an avelus. It's only possible in a tishabov. I don't mean that like by morning on tishabov we're getting it out of our system or it's a. Uh, that's not what I mean. I mean to say that um, I, I find that a moed is an, if a moed means an encounter with Hashem, that I feel the Tisha B'Av is an encounter with Hashem. It's a meeting with Hashem. You know, here, in, here in this country, uh, I, make, I make this point often here in this country, so on Yom HaShoah, there's a siren. Everybody, almost everybody, um, pays attention to the siren People stop whatever they're doing. They stop their work. They get out of their car on the highway. They stand. They give respect for, I think it's a minute, um, but during the remembering the Shoah. And I always think to myself, like, all these people, thousands, hundreds of thousands of people getting out of their car, stopping, workplaces stopping, factories stopping, what are they thinking about during that minute? Like, what are they, like, that minute, like almost all of Eretz Yisrael stops. What are they thinking about during that minute? I, I believe they're thinking about Hashem. I mean, well, in one way or the other. Maybe they're pro, maybe they're con. Maybe, maybe they're, they're angry about the Holocaust. Maybe they're considering, you know, there's a lot of different ways, a lot of different types of Jews. There's, there's Ashkenazim, Svartim, there's people that are Chilonim. There's all kinds of people to get out of their cars. But I think all of them are thinking about God. The Koral it's a, it's, a, it's a moment of, not yuntiv in the standard sense of the word, but it's a moment, moment of moed. It's a moment of avad, hitvadut, with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. I don't know if it's intended like that. Sitting, memorializing the Holocaust. And I think Tisha B'av is a, a very simple thing. At the end, what we're doing here is we're thinking about Hashem, and what in the world are we doing here? What in the world is the world created for? Why was there a binyan based on Mikdash? Why was there a Chorban based on Mikdash? How are we here today in Eretz Yisrael together? <laughs> a miracle of miracles in all of history, something as I always say, my grandparents would only dream about being sitting right here in Eretz Yisrael. And, and at the same time, we're worried there's going to be a siren any second. And we're going to, what are we going to do? Everyone's looking for their makam, like under the, in the fortified place. It's such a, a mixed up uh, situation. And what's it all about? This is an encounter with Hashem. And this is what we have to do this morning. I think we have to, as best as we can, um, try to understand. I want to say this, that, um, you know, First of all, my usual um, preamble, um, we don't say all the keynotes here. If you want to say all the keynotes here, this is not really the place for you. Um, there's almost every other show says all the keynotes. And it's not like I'm, um, you know, like not, not wanting to say so many keynotes. That's not the point. But we're working with what I've learned from my Rebbe, Rav Scheinberg, and had a big discussion with, with Rav Palm, Zecher Tzadikim Levracha, um, that it, it works like my suggestion was, and they agreed with me, that it works like Slichos. And by Slichos, the Shulchan Aruch says, Toiv ma'at be'kavona me'har be'beloi kavona. It's better to understand what you're saying, just to say the words of Kinos. Um, it doesn't have any great value in, in my mind. It might have some kind of a uh, Kabbalistic thing, but it's not even like Pirkei Teil, and what's, what's the value of it? Uh, you know, growing up, I always said, considered uh, saying the Kinos is one of the Inuyim. <laughs> you know, you're not allowed to eat, you're not allowed to drink, you have to say Kinos. It was just one part of the torture of the day. But, um, <laughs> but I, um, Karel Aimoyed, there's, there's something more to it. So we choose um, Kinos. I don't have any great Kedushim to say over last year, the year before, and I don't think this is the place for, Tisha B'Av is the place for the time for, for any great uh, Chidush Torah. Um, Kinos are the same, situations kind of the same. Um, the only thing that's changed over the last year or two is, um, is me. Um, so therefore, there's, there is always some, in base Medrash, there's always some extra insight. 
I want to, um, the, the, the Tisha B'Av day when we were building the building here, Binyan Habayis, so um, it was during that time that um, Danny Zucker, where's Danny Zucker? Danny Zucker's mother was Niftar, so it was actually on the 10th of, just like now, on the 10th of August, was the yard site, and the family um, made a permanent dedication, L'Zecher Nishmasa, Esther Zucker, L'Zecher Nishmasa, was a very important dedication, first of all, to, um, for the meeting, uh, for, the, for the building, but it was also a, um, an appropriate dedication Esther Nechama Zucker, in the words of Danny, she was a teacher, she loved Torah, she taught Torah, she chaired Torah. She loved Eretz Yisrael, just like we love Eretz Yisrael. Um, in fact, she's the perfect dedication, and her neshama should have a big, big aliyah on Tisha B'av, and on today on the Nitcha of Aser B'av, and uh, she um, has a schus here of Limud Torah of many, many people, and the Moyed, coming together with HaKadosh Baruch Hu of many, many people, and her, um, not only her Neshama Shav and Aliyah, but she should be a Melitza Yeshara. She has a special audience, we're going to even say it in the keynotes, a special audience with HaKadosh Baruch Hu today. And in that audience, um, your sight on that audience, we ask her to do what she did when she was alive, she could do even more now, which is to help Eretz Yisrael, help her students, all the students that she had. Help us, and uh, the whole class Israel should have a Yeshua. Also, um, a lot of the technology here is being sponsored um, by um, Lamanachai. Lamanachai, everybody's familiar with Lamanachai. Lamanachai, which I'm involved with, um, is, a, um, is really a place to go for anybody with Saris in this community. Um, if you don't know your Manachai, it's probably because Baruch Hashem you haven't had Saras. But um, any, anybody, whether it's financial, whether it's um, they, they, whether it's financial is a big one, but what, financial or needing guidance, um, counseling, um, even marriage counseling, finding people are lost, you know. And the, the purpose of Lamanachai is that people should not be lost, and there's a dedicated staff working all day, every day. I'm making sure that as, as much as they can that every person in Beit Shemesh or Ramat Beit Shemesh is Masudar and Yeshrikot uh, to them and they should only be Matzliach further and further. And another piece of the dedication was made by my um, very, very close friends, Jonathan Barron. and his wife, I just want to read their names, thank you. In the merit of good health and arichas yamim for Jonathan's parents, Ruven ben Rivka and Yaakova bas Devara. And he says, how much money do you need? <laughs> okay. okay, Baruch Hashem, very, very generous and anything that, um, anything he can do to help me be Marvitz Tyra, he does. The, I just want to uh, mention here Kina Yudalud, which we're going to say in a few minutes. So Kina Yudalud begins with the words, Echa es asher kfar asohu tabi mimenu ligvais nishyehu. Um, and there's, there's two things that we have to understand, and I'm, I'm putting this Yudalud, I'm mentioning it now because I think it's the Yisod for the Kinas that we're going to say. Um, the, the question... First of all, Yermio, or, or Lazar Akal, or based on Yermio, is asking a question. The whole, the whole, the whole Megillus Eicha of Yermiyahu is a big question. Eicha. It's a question we're not allowed to even ask all year round. Eicha. Meaning, how, how could it be that um, millions of people died in the Holocaust? How could it be that there was a Chorban by Eishrishon, and apparently also um, over a million people died? How could it be that there's 2,000 years of Gullus that we're going through? How could it be um, all the individual tsaris that people have every day and every night? And Yermiyahu, his avoda was to say, or to ask, Eicha, Eicha Yechol How could such a thing be? We don't usually ask Eicha. We usually say, We'd say, Even we go to a Levaya, even if we're so hurt and we're so crying, 
We, we don't say um, Eicha, we say Tzidduk Adin. That's what we do. So the Tzidduk Adin is Hashem um, is just and he knows what he's doing at all times. So um, somehow or another, there's another Avoida of Tishabov, and the Avoida of Tishabov is Eicha. Um, the deeper Pshat in Eicha is Eikoi. Eiko, Eiko, Eicha. Eiko means ko. Whenever, whenever the Nevi'im speak in the name of Hashem in a very, very visible way, so they use the Lashon Koi. Koi, Yamar Hashem, Ashomayim, Kisiva, or it's Atem Ragloi, right? They talk about ko. Ko means like you can see it, just like this is this. Um, when there was a Beis Hamikdash, there was ko. You know, even by the Akedah. Aniva Anar Melcha Ad Koi Shulach and Poim Achamor, Vaniva Anar Melcha Ad Koi, Nishtachave, Venashuva Alechem. Koi is the place where heaven meets earth. Ko is the place where we can sort of have this saga that Hashem created the world and He's in the world. When the Navi speaks in Allah Shem Ko, it means that there's a hashras hashchina. Yirmiyo said, Eiko, Eicha, Eiko, where, where is the Ko? When, if there's no Beis HaMikdash, the Beis HaMikdash is the place where heaven touches earth. The Beis HaMikdash is the place where there's Gilui hashchina. And if there's no Gilui hashchina, Eiko, how are we supposed to know what to do? Eiko. Um, and that's, Yermio's main question that the that Rabbi Lezer Akaler wrote Kino after Kino um, and gave us Kinos as we know them based on these words of Eko and the different five chapters in Yermiyahu. Eko se Chazal, Echa, is also the Lashon of Ayeko, the very first word that Hashem said to Adam Harishain after the Chet. Adam Chava, they ate from the Esadas and they were hiding. Hiding means that they felt that they were separating. They were separating, not a shepherd was separating them. They were separating. They, they were separating, trying to get away from Hashem. And Hashem said to them, Ayeko, which Chazal say, Eko. Because the Ko is not only in the Sarusa de Leila of a Kaddish Baruch Hu, coming into this world, it's also the Sarusa de Lasata of us building the Beis Hamikdash, and what it means for us is that every one of us, and this is where I say we have to get right back to the Moyed here, of meeting with Hashem, every one of us here has a Neshama. What, what is it? Let's not forget what it is. What it is is that there's uh, something from Hashem that goes into our goof. And here we are with this goof, which is a utility, like a car, you know, like a house, a piece of Gashmias that dies, gets lost in the earth. Um, but the Neshama, is, is the place where, where we're given the equipment to be able to accomplish our goal in this world and bring the Shechina into the world. So, Adam Yermio is asking, Eiko Avuzaitir, and Hashem is asking back to Adam Arishan, Ayeko, the same Lashem. Because this Ko is the Beis HaMikdash. The Ko is where Shemayim and Aretz meet. We all know that there's, um, like you know, by Mitzrayim, there was Memta Shari Tuma, 50 altogether. There's only 50 together. We went down Memta Shari Tuma, and there's 50, 50 Sharim going up. The Zayar says that the ladder of Yaakov had 50 um, what's it called? rungs in it. Um, Avram Avinu said to his Assistant Shvula Chempoi Ima Chamor, Gashmi sometimes has to stay here. Vani Vahanar, me and Yitzhak, Nelcha Ad Koi. We're going to go as far as a human being can go, and there we're going to meet Hashem, who's going to come as far as Hashem wants to come, and there's going to be Haramoria. There's going to be the place of the Beis Hamikdash. 
There we'll connect with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, but Nashuva Aleichem will bring it back down to earth. So this is the co, you know, if Avram Avidu didn't show up on that day of the Akedah, Hashem would have said Ayeka. But the Ayeka, the Avram Avinu showing up with Yitzhak, was a tikkun of Adam Arishan trying to run away and Chava. And if Hashem didn't show up, so as the Kina says, going to say, like, so what do we do this for? Yitzhak says, what did I do this for? This is what he says on, on, what, at the, at the Maris HaMach Bela. There has to be this meeting. The meeting that we understand is the Beis HaMikdash. Why am I telling you Yud Dalit? Because this is interesting. Eicha es asher kvar asuhu tavim renu ligbais nishyehu. Here, Rebbe Lazar Kali, which is all based on Yirmiyahu, um, asks the question, why are we having Tsaris by what you programmed immediately into the earth? You programmed this directly as Akshar Kvara Su. This Harbin Bayis Rishain was there from the minute you created the world, even earlier. Because everybody knows, this is the Madrash and Rashi even brings it, that, um, that the world was Va'arz Haisatayu, Vafayu, Vachaisha Hatoim. That before the Bria, there was tohu, vavo, and it's a big argument. What does it even mean? Do we have even a right to think about what's tohu, what's vohu? Are we supposed to think about it? What's it saying it there for? And well, the the the, the chat which is accepted by everybody is Reb Shimon ben Lakish, Pasar Kroya Begolius. Reb Shimon ben Lakish is in the Medrash Rabba, is the main place, Parak Beis, um, Dalid. He said that this is talking about the Golius, Golus Bavel, Golus Yavan, Gavul Golus Rom Paras, Golus Romi. All the Goliaths that we're in, we're in the we're in the um, Golos Edoim right now. Uh, that's where we're still holding Golos Edoim. All these were programmed when Hashem created the world. He created the world. Rishlakish told us this was the four Goliaths that, and the lashon of the Chazal is that the world is going to be Nech Banui Nechrav Banui Nechrav, and so it's going to go on. So what do you want from us? Why are we suffering so much? Why do we have not only a korban based on Midrash? Why do we have a Holocaust? Tisha B'Av is not a day to answer the question, it's a day to ask the question. Eicha, Eicha Sasher Kvara Suha. This was already done already. It doesn't make any sense that we should have any kind of suffering from what Hashem programmed into the world. Doesn't make any sense, does it? And, and your Mio continues to ask this question, paragraph after paragraph in Yudalit. But there is an overall shot that we say Eicha and we ask all these hard questions but the overall shot is that the not the shot it doesn't mean that Hashem created it doesn't mean that Hashem created okay Golos Bavel you think it's going good you're going to get it Bavel no matter who you are no matter what you're doing Nebuchadnezzar is going to come and he's going to kill you all and throw you out of Eretz Yisrael no the, the world you know we learned about this in the in the Sitka Satsadik Shiurim, the world is Vayera Vayiboker. Vayera Vayiboker, Yom Rishon, Yom Sheni, Yom Shlishi. Everything's Vayera Vayiboker. Every Taruvas of Yom Valayla. That's the way the world is. We, the, the, the light and the night, they're, all, they're both good. They're both part of the Bria. Hashem puts this down here. We have to make our choices. And if our choices are to get stuck in the wrong places, so then the Choshech is Miskaber. In other words, our job is to be able to take what HaKadosh Baruch Hu created and to sort it out in a way that there's Geula and there's Tikkun. We messed up at the very beginning on the first day. We messed up. We ate from the Eitzah, Eitzah Das. We messed it up. We made the wrong choice. The, choice. the choice that we made on day one of Bria Adam, the choice that we made was to go after our own needs and forget about why we were created. Isn't that what happened? Okay. Hashem said, this is why I'm creating you. I'm putting you in the gun. I'm, I'm creating, I'm giving you a neshama, vayipach ba'ap of nishmas chayim. And the purpose of the whole thing is that you should make this world into a, a, a base Hashem. And you didn't do that. And as soon as you didn't do that, Hashem says, ayeka. And we turn around to Hashem and we say, eko. Eicha. It, it makes a big kasha because there's a schism between the Shemayim and the Aretz. 
doesn't, it's not working smoothly. When it's not working smoothly, say some sleepless, some penis rather. Kina Vav is where we start. I don't want to keep saying it, but this is all based on words from Yirmiyahu. It's, it's um, Yirmiyahu Hanavi is really the Navi of Tishabhav. I mean, he's not only the Navi who predicted the Harbin, but he was the Navi which <coughs> really explained to us what's going to happen in Golos and what's going to happen, and, and we need to explain this more, but what's going to happen if we don't do tshuva. So Yirmiyahu was, the, was the, the, not just a Navi at the time of the Harbin, but he was the Navi of the Harbin, and he was, he was ex- warning Kla Yisrael, warning us, to remember our purpose in this world. You know, it's a good thing if you don't listen to me for the rest of the time, because it's hard to listen sitting on the floor. <laughs> but like, what's good to think about is, you know, like why were we created? I don't mean why the world was created, why people were created, why Jews were created. I think, why, why were we created? Like, what's our relevance? What's our relevance here in this world? What are we doing? Maybe it's to teach Torah, maybe it's to do a chesed, maybe it's to just to have a family. And have, but I mean, everybody, but you have to have a relevance. We weren't created for nothing. And what Yermio was really saying was that, you know, you, you, you guys lost your way. And when you lose your way, just um, take a look at this for a second, and then we'll say it. The first words of Kinevav, which is the first words of the Kinos of the morning, is Shovas. Shovas means everything stopped. Shavas means like a, um, a sudden stop. Yeah, Rev Soloveitchik in this beautiful work of Kinos, I remember as a kid, we went to him once. He, you know, this is, if we think we're doing something special, Rev Soloveitchik, early in the morning, all of a sholem, and um, I, mean, I didn't learn by Rev Soloveitchik, but it was something to see that um, from the morning, some years until Shkia, not until Chatzais, he explained every word of the Kinos, sitting on the floor, explained the Kinos. <laughs> like, uh, first of all, like the kind of gone you have to be. I could read this <laughs> and understand a little bit, but to understand every word of the Kinos and to explain it with tears. But he says, Shavas means suddenly. And the question he asks is, what was so sudden about this? The fact is that Yermio was warning her about the, the Harbin Bayis Rishon for um, probably about 40 years, if you make the Cheshman. He was talking about the, the Harbin Bayis Rishon, and it was even earlier, um, Yishayahu Anavi, warning about the, the, the Harbin. There was nothing su- sudden about the Harbin, but to us, it felt sudden. In other words, I would, I would say in Ima Kavod that um, in, in fact, um, it wasn't sudden. You can learn sudden to mean, just uh, give me your attention for a second here. You can learn sudden like sometimes, you know, when a tragedy is about to happen, let's say we have a loved one who's not well and they're sick and, and we know that they're getting worse and worse and worse, and then they die suddenly. Somehow or another, it's still a shock. Even if you know it's going to happen, that's shavas. But the, maybe the reason for that, the deep Kabbalistic reason for that is because gradual, grad, gradual is, a, is something in the, in the human mind. By Hashem, either it's this way or it's that way, like the lights go on or the lights go off. A gradual is, is maybe a gift to people that we shouldn't be so shocked. But at the end, either it's or or it's choshech. You know, the, the, the Gemara says that we don't know exactly when, um, when, when night is, so we have such a thing as ben hashmoshes. <laughs> so ben hashmoshes, is it uh, 18 minutes? Is it 72 minutes? Is it um, starts with the beginning of the possibility, the sun hitting the ground, hitting the water? And it could be like her says, says, like that. Um, 
Like you blink of an eye, Yeshua Hashem Karafayim. So we, like tragedy is sudden, and so is Geula, sudden. Everything could be sudden. So the, the first word of the Kinos this morning is Shavas, that as gradual as it would be, and as much as we were in denial, and as much as uh, it was impossible for it to go so quickly, Shavas, it, it, was a, it was an immediate thing. What happened immediately? And so just a couple of words, and then we'll say it together. Surumeni. Um, do, do you know what this means? It means that the, the Klai Yisrael, Klai Yisrael um, thought everything was good, and they, they were comfortable in their communities. They were Makomo Shel Torah in many cases. There was even Beis HaMikdash. And like a Harafayin, a snap of the finger, everything changed. And people said suru many. One of the stories, um, you know, we've all heard and read stories of, 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 the, of the Holocaust. And I don't believe Tisha B'Av is about sitting and telling stories of the Holocaust. But I just, I just always remember, it always pops into my mind something that a member of my shul in Buffalo told me, it was a Holocaust survivor, told me years and years ago. And I, so the picture was always in my mind. He talks about how, he talked about how, like they had a neighbor in, in um, their Carpathian Mountains, that's where they lived. And a neighbor, and the neighbor was a non-Jew, and they were a Jew, and, and uh, they would uh, schmooze, they would take walks together, they would have a coffee together, they would sometimes go shopping together, they would share each other's gardens, he told me, they would t- a Jew and a guy. <laughs> and then the Gestapo and the Nazis came into their city, I believe it was Sigit, I think that was the name of the city. Um, they came in, and Jews were in danger, came to that area, and he said his mother went to the neighbor and said, you know, protect us, we just want to hide here while the sirens are going. And she said, the neighbor, she said, Hunt geavekfunda. You're a dog, get out of my house. There was a shock, besides for the sirens of the Gestapo, and besides for the Holocaust that was people being trained away to death camps and concentration camps, there was like a sudden change in the whole relationship between everybody on the block. And this was called, look at the words, suru many, just get away from me, suru many. Get away. Avek funda hunt. Makara. We changed. You changed. What happened? Nobody can explain this. It's a phenomenon which took place over and over and over again in Jewish history. No matter how many illnesses we cured, no matter how high we've gotten in, polit- in politics, and whether it was the Greeks or the Romans or the Babylonians or the Christians, all of a sudden, there's a surah many. We don't want you in our face. Let's get out of here. You're making tsaris. I leave the explanation to you, but what, what Yermio said is, Echa. This was Silo Kashchina. The Silo Kashchina is Keherifayim. And the moment there's a Silo Kashchina, you who I thought loved me all of a sudden hates me. I don't know if this was gradual, it was going on, and we were just fooling ourselves. I don't know, I'm not a social um, psychologist, but I do know that there was a suddenness. It, it, it was a suddenness. People that were glorified, people thought this can't touch me. I, I, hey, I'm not even religious. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm like a guy, I live like a guy. Doesn't make any difference. Because when there's Silo Kashchina, the miracle, get this, the miracle of our existence stops to exist in the same way that it did a minute ago. Because the very fact that we're able to be alive, the very fact that we're here after all of these uh, pogroms and holocausts and, and, and destructions is a miracle. And that miracle is the Shechina. When the Shechina starts to move and we're not meeting, the heaven and the earth is, is not meeting together, though, so all of a sudden there's darkness. And that's the Surumin money. It was, it was the shock of the time. It's also um, just a few um, 
Just let's just read the first one together. Read it all together. Shabbat surameni shimuni oichrei. That's what we heard. Schi umois hesimuni beedre chaverei. And here, Rebbe Yezer Akaler is so graphic. Schi umaos. We became not just get away from me, but schi is the phlegm that we want to get out of our throat, and we spit onto the ground, and we step on it. Maos. We become something disgusting. Maos maastani. Not like what? <laughs> I just I just cured you. I was your doctor. Schi, I think what it means is don't want to be too maos, but that's what it says here. Schi is something you want to get out of your system. Schi umois, something you want to get rid of. Something you want to get out, like vomiting. The goyim wanted to vomit the Jews. Schi umos. It was, it, was, it was killing them inside of them. This is what happens when we're not connected with the Shekhinah. You know, uh, Rabbi Yudin said last night, all of our tsars come from the Beis HaMikdash. We've heard this a hundred times, you know, from the Chorban from the Beis HaMikdash. It, um, of course, but it's, it's a much, I would say, not deeper, but a simpler thing than that. All of our tsars come when there's no connection between us and Hashem, the whole world. It's like you're taking the plug out of the wall. Of course the lights are going to go out. Maybe there's Barach Hashem, there's a little bit of generator, but of course, why did it get so dark all of a sudden? Well, somebody, there's a blackout. The, the, when, when, there's, when there's a Chorben Beis Hamikdash, there is a blackout. So Tzchiyumos, all of a sudden our whole position in the world changes. Does everybody understand how this is what happens over and over in history? No matter who we think we are, our whole position changes. That's Hashem. Sakosa, another thing that happens at this moment of Chorban is Sakosa Mishkan Mischois de Virai. There's a, um, there's a separation. Sakosa is like a sukkah, yes? Chach. So Sakosa Mishkan Mischois de Virai. De Virai is the Beis Hamikdash, and the Shemayim is Lamala from the Beis Hamikdash. There's a, there's a Yerushalayim Shemala and a Yerushalayim Shemato. And there's like reception. We understand better today than they ever understood in history. Like reception, like you need to have this kind of connection between the top and the bottom, otherwise nothing works. And what happens if you go into a tunnel? So if you go into a tunnel, if they haven't figured it out yet, so sakoisa, there's, there's a schach in for those three seconds, or 10 seconds, um, you don't get ways because sakoisa, right? We don't have reception during that time. All of a sudden, what happens is you're confused. When you don't have reception, there's confusion. It's, not, it's, it's, um, it's a time of sakoisa, mishkan, miskois, devirai. Like here we are with our neighbor in the city of Sigit, and everything's been good for 100 years since the, since the pogroms. And there's a whole new generation, and we're all more um, sophisticated and smarter, and maybe not from like you know, we're not we're not in your face that way. But all of a sudden, we're in a tunnel. Sakoisa. All of a sudden, we're in a tunnel, and they're saying sur menus chiyomois. So this is what the kina says. Sakoisa. What's really happening is that there's a machitza between us, a separation between us, the base amikdash shomato, and the base amikdash shomalo. You know, everybody knows that um, the Gemara says that when when the uh, when Titus came and destroyed the second base Amikdash, um, so on that the Gemara says that um, it was Kemach uh, Tochun Tochanta. It was already destroyed before we went in there. Of course, it was a, it was you know there was Sinas Chinam, and you know we'll, we'll learn about it in the Kinos. Um, there was there was kinas in the bias risha in Abu Dazara. but um, suddenly we were in the tunnel. Saf kuchaf, some fascinating words. Saf kuchaf umada evarai. What does saf kuchaf mean? When the goyim saw our enemies, when they saw that we lost the base of Migdash, and we lost our social standing, and we lost our money, and we lost our homes. Saf kuchaf. Great applause. We did it. There was an applause. Saf kuchaf. Behuvlaga giborai. And everybody 
got all excited. Kisila kol abirai. Just to explain something for a moment. The, the, the Lushen of Safku Chaf is an old Lushen um, in Tanakh, Safku Chaf. Zayar speaks about Safku Chaf. You know, um, I may have explained this many times before, but maybe not on Tisha B'Av, that um, when Hashem gives us our neshama, so he gives us a yamin and he gives us a small. You have the right and the left, you know, like when you say, um, go out of Shemoneser, you say, oh, se shalom, be merima, ya se shalom, aleinu, right? The shechina is always on the right, right? Even an iter yad, yeah? The shechina is always on the right, oh, se shalom, be merima, ya se shalom. And we have a yad yamin and a yad small, not only one is stronger than the other, but the yad yamin is chesed and the yad small is din. And the, the significance of yamin and small is chesed and din. You know, when a chassan and kala walk down to the chuppah, so um, the, the photographer is always screaming, Mitterech tefus, im regal ayamin, or, or the rabbi or somebody is always instructing them on this very important thing, take your right foot first, put your right foot forward. It has to do with, um, with midas ha-chesed, put the chesed before the din. In, in, uh, in Kabbalah, there's such a thing as hamtokes ha-dinim. So hamtokes ha-dinim, like, it's nice when everything is chesed, and it's not so comfortable when everything's din. But what we're looking for is chesed, givura, and then what's the third one? Tiferes. And what happens with Tiferes? Tiferes is a combination of chesed and givura. That's really the, the ultimate uh, place to be, where tzadkenu ba mishpat. Melach oyev tzedakah u mishpat. Hashem loves tzedakah and mishpat together. Um, Tzedakah and Mishpat means that not, if everything is chesed, you know, uh, it sounds good, like everything should be chesed, but then we become like, um, like uh, flower children, <laughs> and, and, and like everything chesed becomes like a little bit like Woodstock, you know? Like everything is good, everything's beautiful, everything, and then there's no gedorim at all, there's no boundaries. So, like, just pure chesed is not a place where you have chaos. Just pure din, sad small, is a place where you have too much boundary and not enough love. So we always mention like, you know, the Hasidic Sherebas, you know, when they daven, they clap their hands. That's Hamtokas Hadinim, some Hasidic Sherebas. That's, that's the Hamtokas Hadinim of taking the Amin and putting it in the small, and the small, putting in the Amin. And that's how really we're supposed to daven like this, yeah? Um, right, right over left. And that's midas hatiferes. You don't, you don't have to mamish, I mean, if you're a rabbi, don't do that here. <laughs> but, you know, the idea, now, what does it mean that when we were destroyed, safku chaf umadu averai? Something, like, wrap your brain around this. The, 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 the goyim, the enemies, were clapping their hands. And it wasn't just incidental, because it's, it's, it's the Lushen of it's the Lushen of the Torah, it's the Lushen of Eliezer HaKalar, Saf Kuchav. means they said, they, they, what, what they were saying was, this was what was I meant, like Jewish people, the party's over. Like now, we're the din, we've come here to create some boundaries, we've come here to say, what do you, what do you really, like what happened here? Are you really um, um, for the Beis HaMikdash? You know, think about that. Are we real for the Beis Rishon, for the Beis Sheni? Are we really roi for Mashiach? Let's get a little din here. We try to stay away from din. But let's get a little bit of din, because with a little bit of din, um, you might not be roi for a Beis HaMikdash, and the Beis HaMikdash gets destroyed. So all of this um, din took place, you see, in a... In a, in a Yermio was called Ben Dinai. <laughs> in the next paragraph, which we're going to say is, Sor Nitzras or Middonai, Soak Ami Bime Ben Dinai. says here in mind, Hu Yermio Anavi. Ben Dinai. Like, there's a din that's coming. There's boundaries that are coming. We need to be ready for that. We have to understand that we need to be ready for it. Um, and that's what this first keynote is about. So I'm going to 
stop talking and we're going to say this and I'll just try to understand every word. Shava suru meni shimune yoibra. Sof kuchav amada ever Any chiksal a chazain ben brachia. Just a couple of uh, quick highlights in this before we go further is that um, the, the Kina talks about how terrible it was, but the whole time, the whole time that it was um, terrible, Surum and the Schiumos, our, our standing changed, um, we were all thinking about any chiksol chazoin ben brechia. We were thinking about the chazoin of Zechariah. And the Chazon of Zechariah was there's going to be a Geula, meaning that the Kla Yisrael had in their minds the whole time, this can't be, it can't be permanent. We have a, we, we, this might be a Harbin, but there's still going to be a Geula. So it means to say that the Jews always understood that we're having a fight, but we're not getting divorced. We're, 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 this is, this is a Hester Panim from HaKadosh Baruch Hu, but it's not a Siluk Lagamri from HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You know, it's um, Chazal say, and this is alluded to Al Pnei Pras, Nupatsu Chasida. I sort of point out something that I just happen to think about. That is, when, when we left Yerushalayim, and we went to, when we were, when the Gullus of Yerushalayim, we went to, to um, towards Bavel, Bais Rishon, the time of Nebuchadnezzar, we went towards Bavel. And we left Eretz Yisrael, so it's true, we left our homes, we left our Parnassa, we, we, we lost a lot of people. And the first, things we, the first thing we came to, Chazal followed us in Echarabu, exactly, the first thing we came to was the Euphrates River. And our pros, and our pros was Gan Eden. Like, you know, so, you know, like you think, wow, this might not be so bad. <laughs> you know, you imagine, like, you know, I mean, I would love to travel to the Nahar Pras. You know, this is where the, the Naharis come together in Gan Eden, and they saw people, they saw, they, um, Chazal say they came, they left Eretz Yisrael, these Golos people, and they were Yishmaelim also there. So the Bnei Yishmael, whatever that means, they were the Bnei Yishmael, they said, okay, they're even cousins and Mishpacha, you know, they'll help us. And they saw these beautiful, the beaches, like the Gashmias, the, the, the homes on the water, that's what they saw. And they thought, okay, if you gotta be in Golos, <laughs> Not so bad. And, but they didn't realize the Silo Kashchino was not only in Eretz Yisrael, the Silo Kashchino was also outside of Eretz Yisrael. And the people, um, Chazal say, Yodua, that they, they came out with jugs of water for them, the, the Bnei Yishmael. They came out with, um, the Bnei Pras came out to try to help them. And we went to um, drink the water and like, the bitter got a little bit of sweet, sweeter, 
but these, these were enemies, Imach Shabam. And according to one day, they put salt in the water to make us more thirsty, or they did something with the air. In any case, we lost, we lost another bunch of thousands of people, al Pnei Pras. So um, the, the, the Kina is underlining the fact that um, like we were looking for Yeshua's in Pichal, this whole Kina that we just said, um, is parallels, if you look at the Psukim, at the, the Psukim of Az Yashir, it parallels with it together. And, and here we say, Lama Ruach HaPeinu L'Tevach Shamaru. It's another case where we had hope, we're going to talk about it in a minute, in Kina Yud Aleph, but we had hope with Yoshio HaMelech, Ruach HaPeinu. It was, it was so clear that, okay, we're done with, the, with, with all the problems. Mashiach is here, Yoshio is here. Um, and here in one sentence, Lama Ruach HaPeinu L'Tevach Shamaru, the Kalir says. You, you, you killed our only chance for Mashiach, our last chance for Mashiach. Um, so it was when it was the ups and downs. You know, I said at the beginning, like it was programmed into the Bria, Banui v'charuv, Banui v'charuv, until we have the final gula. That's our job. And here we say also, if just taking it quickly through the kina towards the end, it says, "Kitam chakta b'chem oifanecha." I'm sorry. Tam chakta b'ches. Thank you. Oifanach on the kisei hakavit, kisei of the oifanim. I explain this every year. That um, Chazal explained this. That the kisei hakavit. Said the pasuk before. Koya marashem. Koya marashem. We say this on Rosh Chodesh. Shabbos Rosh Chodesh. Koya marashem. Hashemayim kisei. Hashem says, and Shemayim is my kisei. In the earth, that's where we are right now, is my footstool. How are we going to create a bias which is connecting the Shemayim, the Kisei HaKavod, with the footstool? How's that going to, how's that going to work? Um, the, 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 one of the Kinos Ali, which we'll say in a few minutes, also talks about the direct connection between the Shemayim and the Aretz that we keep talking about, whether it's the ladder of Yaakov, whether it's the um, Kisei HaKovet and the Shemayim and going through the Yolamos of Atzilus, Bria, Yisir, and Asiya. There has to be this connection. Now, what's interesting is Chazal say, fascinating Chazal that I love to say over, Chazal say that um, when Yaakov Avinu went to sleep and had his nevuah, and he dreamt about the sulam, which starts in the earth and goes to the Shemayim, this, this phenomenon that we're talking about. So um, Chazal say that in his dream, he saw the Kisei HaKavod on the top of the ladder. And on the Kisei HaKavod, he saw Chaku Gal Shem HaKisei HaKavod, Shem Avram, he saw his grandfather's name was carved into the Kisei HaKavod. Like, wow. Meaning, Avram Avinu, his grandfather, not only, like, good man, tzaddik, no, affected the whole Bria, because the Kisei HaKavod is where the whole Bria comes from. So he affected the whole Bria. And he saw Avram Avinu affect the whole Bria, and he came closer, he was more comfortable with the Kisei HaKavod. <laughs> he came closer and he saw Yitzchak, Shem Yitzchak, Chakuk, Al Kisei HaKavod. He saw that Yitzchak was also engraved in the Kisei HaKavod, means from the Akedah. And Yaakov said, that's my father. So, like, we're not just, um, like, the Jews, the Jewish people, or some, some um, righteous tribe or unrighteous tribe. This is the whole Bria, Avraham, Yitzchak, until he came closer, and he said, he saw his own shame, say Chazal. Chokhu kal Kisei HaKavod. He saw shame Yaakov. By the way, it doesn't say Yisrael, it says Yaakov. And that was his dream. He saw what his place is in the world. And he said, when he woke up, Wow, this is like really a holy place. This is like Mamish, the place which it was, of the Hara Maria, of building the Beis Amigdash, the place of the Akeda, the place where you reach Hashem, the place where the world was created, right from here, from the, from the Kaisal, from the Beis Amigdash. 
אין זה כי אם בייסר ואנוכי But wow, that I'm carved into the Kisei HaKovet, lo yodati, das habuch nishkivos, that I didn't realize. Like, so even though he came to the place where he realized that, that there's a connection between the Kisei HaKovet and the Oretz, and even though he came to a place where he realized that Yerushalayim HaKovet and the Beis HaMikdash will be that connection, and that he's dreaming about it, and even after he realized that Avraham Avinu, his grandfather and Yitzchak, were essential to the, to the Kiyom of the Oilam, meaning that Hashem brought Avraham and Yitzchak into this world in order to teach the world how to live, how to act. But then Yaakov saw his own relevance. You know how many, people, how many of us walk around like this? I had a great grandfather, I'm a Jew. But what am, I, what am I doing in this world? That I'm written over there in the Kisei HaKav, that was a huge chiddush to, to Yaakov Avinu. And now the Makonein is coming back and he's saying, How could you destroy the Jews if, the, if we're the Bnei Yaakov or the Bnei Yisrael and our whole existence is here to make this world into a world. You, you already created Avraham and Yitzhak and Yaakov. So Tam Chakta B'chesoi Fanech were intrinsic to the Bria. So how could it be that Tashul Mam Gmul, Oz Chazoi Spanecha, the Oz over here refers to Oz Yashir. How could it be that you took the nation that you saved and you're destroying them now and you're allowing, you're destroying the base of Mikdash? And this is really the, 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 the Eicha, the question that we're asking, but what's more important is Eikoi. How could it be that there's no Ko? And to this Hashem keeps answering, Ayeko, where's your Ko? Asking where my Ko is, where's your Ko? Like, it's a meet over here in the base of Mikdash. And then in Zion, Eicho Atzta. You know what Atzta means? Atzta, what are you rushing for? Not so fast, God. Uh, okay, like, let's say, here's the question of the skina. Let's say we're terrible people, and we've done terrible Averos, and now you want to um, punish us. But echa atzta ba'apecha la'abed b'yad adoyminim amunacha. But what are you rushing into it? Give us a chance to do tshuva. Give us a chance to show that this was just a cycle in history. I mean, after all, like af- even after the worst situations in the history of the Jewish people, the worst Averas, we went so far away, we did Shuvah, yeah? We saw even our own lifetime about Shuvah movement. We, we see that we're, I mean, uh, we're not only standing during sirens during Yom HaShoah, but we built, we built Eretz Yisrael, uh, Rav Yisrael al Muslim. Most people are coming here to Eretz Yisrael. What's that for? There's something going on over here. So, Echa Atzta, what are you destroying us? Give us a fighting chance. And here, I just want to explain something here. The question that we're asking, that we're allowed to ask on Tisha about why are you so fast to destroy us? And it's wrong, we're saying. bris bain habsarim. Don't we have a deal? What's the Brisbane Absarim? That's a deal that you Hashem made with Avraham Avinu, which the Nevi'im later called Netzach Yisrael, Lo Yishakir. That you're not going to destroy the Jewish people. In the Brisbane Absarim, it also says that there's going to be ups and downs and Choshech and Or. But to destroy us? What about the Brisbane Absar? Loizacharta Brisbane Absar, Masher Beirarta Livchunacha. Zachar Hashem Mehayelanu. Now I want to share something with you. Can you, can you give me a Gemar Shabbos regular? Regular? Yeah. Gemar says in Shabbos. To know the um, significance of this Gemara, the Gemara says in Shabbos Nun Hey. The Gemara says, "Machlokes Rav and Shmuel." 
whether Tamas Chus Abbas or not Tamas Chus Abbas. Like, you know, wow, what a... <laughs> Do we still have any um, schus from the fact that we come from Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, or do we not? Isn't that a pretty fundamental question? Achleik is Rabu Shmuel. Halachik is Shmuel. Shmuel says, Shmuel Amar, Tamas Chus Avais. Rabbi Yechanan Amar, Rabbi Yechanan, Rabbi Yechanan is talking about the Amira, right? Techoin Chus Avais. What does that mean? You know, tachoin, tough, ches, bav, no. Huh? Yeah, it's on pause. Paused. <laughs> Rashi says, like, like, don't get so excited. <laughs> like, pascha, schusavais, just tachon schusavais. So comes Taisus. That's what Gemara says, that it's a very um, distressing Gemara. Because, like, we assume that we are here now because of Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, and we have some schusavos here. Not even just our, our great grandfather who, was, who, who, was, who did a bris in a Zman Sakana, but, you know, schusavos. So it says Taisu, Samar Rabbeinu Tam. Taisu, Rabbeinu Tam was a victim of the Crusades himself. Amar Rabbeinu Tam, the schusavos Tama. It's true that schus avais ended. Avo bris avais leitam. Few. <laughs> there's a schus avais, and then there's a bris avais. So two things. Did you know this? So schus avos, what's the difference? Schus avos means things will be okay for us. Schus avos. And whether it's in Gansen gone or parts of it are gone, Thomas Chusavais, we can't rely, probably what it means is, we can't rely on Chusavais. Avobrisavais, this deal, the original deal that Hashem made with Avram Avinu, Loitama de Haksiv, says Rabbi Nutam, Vizacharti is Brisi Yaakov, Vaaf is Brisi Yitzchak, Vaaf is Brisi Avram. There's a bris, I've got to always remember that bris. Aflacher Golus, says Taisus. Vanon, Einonu Maskirim, Schus Avais, Ela Bris Avais. So therefore, we don't mention Schus Avais, we mention Bris Avais. Machoikis here, he brings the Re, the Re says, it's not true. We still also mention schusavis. Lo elam schusavis kayemes. Ulo elam anu maskirim oisam. Chen hu aimer kikel rachum. Right, like like uh, every time we say slichus, we say schor lano. Brisavis hasher amarta, and we also say schor lano. We say zoycher abris. And we also we also ask Hashem and Slichas to remember our schusas, our scharlano, schar as Avraham, as Yitzchak, as Yaakov. We we say all that. So here in the Kina, the kasha is like a very deep kasha. Echa atzta ba'apecha la'abed biad edoimim amunecha in the hands of Edoim. So it's talking about the Bayasheni. You destroyed us so quickly. Why'd you rush into this for? V'loy zacharta. Bris bein habsarim asher beirar talif chunecha zechar Hashem mehayolano, which of course is from the last parak of uh, of Eicha. Zechar Hashem mehayolano, right? It was, that's so. What's zechar Hashem mehayolano? What are we asking Hashem for? Schus avos. That's what the re says. Um, and this goes back and forth. I just just say this. Here's the good news and the bad news. The the, the good news is that Hashem's never going to forget the Brisavais. Metzach Yisrael lo Yishakar, we will always be here. The bad news is that what does it mean we'll always be here? Who's always going to be here? A minion? Um, people live in Eretz Yisrael? Uh, from people? Um, 
So Schus Abbas would say, like, I always think to myself, like Baruch Hashem, I'm involved with a lot of Bali Chuba, I always think to myself, like, I even ask people, like, what's your Schus Abbas? There must have been something here that you who have zero to do with anything Jewish all of a sudden are coming to my classes on, on the Ramchal. Like, my, there must be some kind of a, a, a Schus Abbas here. Could be. We could still have some Schus Abbas. But who gets in, who who gets to live through the bris abbas? That's um, the big question, and um, it's a little bit sad because not everybody um, makes it to the bris abbas. And I'm saying this not to sadden anybody. I mean, it's Tisha B'Av. I'm allowed to do that, but I'm saying it more to. Um, you can't hear me. Yeah. Huh? I'm, I'm saying it so we understand more. In, you know, um, we were talking, Yossi and I, it's an amazing thing that in, uh, in the, fift- in the uh, 15th century, in 1492, and in, in those years before that, early 1400s, was the um, took place the beginning and the end of Gerush Sfarad, Spanish expulsion, the Portuguese expulsion, the Spanish Inquisition. Um, this was Spain at that time was the biggest Makam Torah in the world. That was where that was the um, you know the Lakewood <laughs> of, uh, of the world, Makam Torah, Vilna, and. Ferdinand married Isabel, <laughs> was a devout Christian, and they were having economic problems. This is the Gashmius of it. And they decided it's because people, there's too many people in this country that um, are either Muslims or Jews, and they're not accepting Yashka. And we have to make a thing over here. This was um, Spanish decree. We have to make a thing over here for the sake of the economy and the success, and so the plants will grow better that everybody's got to either convert to Christianity or go. Um, now, I, and, and we went. I mean, it was, it was the Spanish expulsion was, that's where we ended up. That's where the Gerush Svar, 1492, those years, that's where we ended up in North Africa and Morocco and Turkey. The Ottoman Empire somehow took us in at the time. Some Jews went to Europe. Um, we divided up. It was like a, a, a crazy time. We all had, at, one, at that time, most of, most of our grandfathers were in Sfarad. Um, and in Sfarad, we had one minhag, we had one nusach, we had one way to be, one way to daven, one way to dress, one way to learn Torah. That's, that's what we did in Sfarad. And then, all of a sudden, we, had, uh, we, we were all confused. By the way, the, the generation right after... Gerush Sorad was a generation of the Gedolim, uh, the Arizal, the Maharal, Rabbi Yosef Cairo, um, all Gedolim, Gedolim Adar, the Al Shech, um, many others trying to get things back together, the Ramoshe Kardavaro, trying to organize Yiddishkeit back together. Do you know that the Shulchan Aruch just learned this in an ancient Sefer? that the Shulchan Aruch, when he wrote the, the um, Shulchan Aruch, the, first he wrote the Beis Yosef, when he wrote the Shulchan Aruch, it's that they thought maybe in, in the early 1500s, as it was, that um, they were in Israel, they came to Tzvas, and all these Gedolim were together, there were all the Beis Yosef, the al the, the al the Ramak, they were all there, and, and you can go there now to their, to their places, to their shuls, and to their, um, and to their Kvarim. And they thought the Mashiach was going to come. They thought they could de- de- make a Sanhedrin, and they could declare Mashiach. And the Shulchan Aruch was the um, was supposed to be the constitution for the state of Israel. Shulchan Aruch didn't work out. I, <laughs> didn't work out because in other words, they thought let's make a country here. This is in the 1500s. Let's make a country over here. Um, there'll be a Melech. Not sure that they thought one of them, one of, that they were the Melech, but you know, and they were all trying to bring it back. The Arizal was bringing back the Messiah of Kabbalah and the Beis Yosef, the Messiah of Halacha. Let's bring it all back together again, and this will be the constitution for the state of Israel. We'll make a Sanhedrin, the Sanhedrin will pask in everything. So it didn't work. Machoikis in Eretz Israel didn't work between Yerushalayim and Sfas. But 
to get back to my point, um, it's a pillow to me, you look over and over and over again, that there's no kina. expulsion and the biggest division and the biggest gullus and, and hundreds of thousands of people got killed also. Like, why isn't there a kina for this? It's a pella. Um, I heard that, um, that the Sephardim have a kina for this. Maybe somehow closer to home have a kina. So I don't have a Sephardi kinos. Um, and I... Uh, didn't know what to do, so I was walking to, I wanted to see this kina for the Gerish Svarat. So last week I was walking here to Shul, and I passed, there's a little Svarati Shul downstairs. I said, let me get a hold of a Svarati kina, so maybe they'll lend me one. And I'll look around, see if there's a kina on the Gerish Svarat. So I went in, and there was a man there, who I didn't know him to be uh, like a big Tamachacham or something like that. Just, man, a good Jew, Davin's in the Shul downstairs. And I said, can I borrow a kina? I want to borrow a Sephardi kinos. So he says, a Rav, <laughs> if I can't trust you, who can I trust? No, no. <laughs> Just sign this. <laughs> but Minhag, take out a book, you have to sign. So anyways, I said to him, do you know, you know, I told him in the Ashkenazi keynote, there's no kina for the Gerush Sephardi. So I said, you know, who knows Kinos, like, really, like. So I said, is there one by the Svardin? So he said, Ken Chavbet. Like that, <laughs> you know. Takes the Kina out from the glass, I think it was the face. He opens it up, and there's one Kina about the uh, Gerush Svarad. And, uh, like, I was just, the main story I want to tell you is that there's, like, Talmidei Chachamim down there. <laughs> that was, like, uh, if you'd ask me, where is this kina? Where's that kina? I teach this every year. You know, right away, kina, and he opened it up for me. And there it was. It says, Al Geru Svart. It says right in the, uh, on the, on the uh, caption of it, no question about it. Interestingly, the kina itself doesn't say anything about Geru Svart. It does say on it, Al Geru Svart. But it, nothing there about Geru Svart. So I just want to say something very sad here. Um, why is there no kina about Geru Svart? I'll tell you, I think. Um, this is something we don't realize. That the government said a decree. Either convert to Catholicism or get the heck out of here. You know what most Jews did? They converted to Catholicism. I'm not talking about crypto Jews or Moranos or Anusim. I'm not talking about anything like that. I'm talking about they just disappeared into history. They're gone. There's many, many Christians. I'm not talking about even people that light candles in their basement. I don't, I'm not talking about that, so you. <laughs> I'm just saying, most Jews assimilated. That's a historical fact. Many didn't. 100,000 didn't. 100,000 said no. Some of them got tortured to death because they didn't want to kiss the cross. But, but um, and many left and they went into Golos because they would not get themselves to say the word. And many kind of faked that they were Christians. That was another thing that we're down them look house close. But the majority, let's tell you a little history here, sad history. They just disappear. You know, it's like I'm sad about this. Maybe that's history. America's present. You know, most of the Jews are not um, like most Jews, they're just disappearing. What's going on? And it, 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 this, this was, you know, just assimilating and intermarrying. I mean, we have to do what we can to, to try to, you know, Hashem Zaveda and try to help these people. They're so called so Tinoko Shanishbu. I think we have to do something to try to help them always. Like, that's something we should do. But the fact is that, you know, I watched it even in my lifetime. People went from Orthodox to Conservative to Reform to Reconstructionist to Unaffiliated to really don't even call themselves Jewish. I remember it was like a huge meeting when I was in America, a huge meeting of the Jewish Federation, which was mostly Reformed Jews. Like, what are we going to do if people don't call themselves Jewish? Who's going to give money to the Federation? Okay. The answer is they didn't need to go to the JCC. They can go to the YMCA. <laughs> it's, it's, um, there will never be a kina for American Jewry. 
there's a great shevach on us who hold ourselves and our children strong. And for all those of us that have come here to Eretz Yisrael, uh, like this is what we're doing to keep us strong. We're, we're like, we're not, we're not assimilating. And to, if anybody's watching online from America, come to Eretz Yisrael because this is, this is where we, it, it, there's not very much intermarriage here and there's not very much uh, assimilation here. You disagree? There is, but it's not like Baruch Hashem. Jews are marrying Jews, even if they're not. There's tremendous. Yad Lachim is doing tremendous work, but we're talking about Baruch Hashem, a percent or two of the Jewish people. If I'm wrong, I, I'm happy to be wrong. I'm happy to be wrong about America, and I think I'm right here. Baruch Hashem, we have a, we have a mahalach here in Eretz Yisrael. The point is, we don't make kinos for people that have opted out. We make kinos for heroes that have stayed in no matter what, like the Asara Aruge Malchus, like the people that, that have, have survived um, the Tachvatat the, 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 the and, the, and, the, and the Crusades, the people that wouldn't give in and yet we're killed anyway. For the, we, we don't make kinos. For, you know, does anybody here worried about the fact that when we went out of Mitzrayim, so only one-fifth of the people went out? Uh, there was a few million Jews in Mitzrayim, maybe 10 million Jews in Mitzrayim. Most of them just disappeared, never to be heard from again, because Judaism is a choice, so full so. I, I know this is not what we're all used to thinking. I'm saying hero, uh, but I'll tell you what I think. I think that self called self. Um, there's a bris of us, and we'll always be people here, and there's a schus of us that we have to daven, that we should have the schus of us, and our brothers and sisters should have the schus of us, and not be stuck into assimilation, and not be stuck into avodazar. But what, what I'm going to describe to you in a, in a couple of minutes what did happen. We lost so many Jews to avodazar. To, we, we lost so many Jews that... Here we are, we're a small number. I think we probably lost, I think Rabdoa Weinberg used to say this all the time, we lost more Jews through assimilation than we did through anti-Semitism. Did he say that? If he didn't, it sounds like something. He would say, it's, it's, it, of, of course. Um, but there's no kina about it, something to think about. So we're asking Hashem, though, give us a chance, and don't rush. So let's say this together, Zion.
Kinaches is Ad Ad Chug Shamayim, and what the Rebbe Lazar Akali refers to in this whole Kina is the fact that when the was Sila Kashchina, um, you know, we, we kind of view the Sila Kashchina from the earth, but the fact is that the whole universe is created, um, you know, for the earth, the sun, the moon, you know, here we are, and there was a Kilkul Hachama, if you read this, there was a Kilkul Hayareach. We said last night in the Kina that even the Mazolais were struggling and suffering. It was the whole Bria that suffered when the Sila Kashina. It wasn't about a building in Yerushalayim. That was like our, our simon, but our place, our focal point. But it was everything. And that's, if you just uh, notice this while you're reading through Adar Chug Shemaim, Kina Ches. Adar Chug Shemaim, Ala Yitzi Shemaim, Lor Yerim Achrivi Pamayim, Sonim Yitim Rishim. Avchin Bevchil El Midbar. We have the Maraglos. Ad veba cholev lam seyu, eda milan bum lam seyu, eda gaye roya blam seyu, a kind of meeting, dati bam seyu, a hofka was half the boy from the Nilaya, give one of the one of one is a mulla, also carries a saddle of a year. That's what meeting, I think, because of Nilaya, I have much to say. Umlalu mazolais bekari me in my life. Och nifsha mekiras ois, achubli mayim baaflat sar, och has come as like sir, by lois lips sir. Eta oli aptini betsal mobis atusavish kaina, chatzer mobis atafilas mocha. Kina tes echot sifarti mera shoisai ishlichu. Here, um, the way Rabbi Lezer Akaler set up this kina, it's a little like a conversation between Hashem and the Knesset Yisrael, and where and Klal Yisrael, Bnei Yisrael, were asking echa, which is the motif here of like. How do we have? How does this happen? Why does this happen? Why is there so much destruction? And, and Hakadosh Baruch Hu points back in this kina to Parshas Bechukosai, where in Bechukosai Tishmo, like I said this to you, this was part of the bris. In Bechukosai Tishmo, you'll have brachas. In Bechukosai Timasu Chas V'Sholom, you'll have klalos. So um, that's an important, very important part in the Torah. Bris, repeated in Parshas Kisavai. So it means to say that we keep on asking Hashem, Eicha Tifarti Mirashai Sai Hishlichu, Ukeneget Kisei Akavai Tselam Himlichu, and in the place of the Beis Hamikdash where there was the 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 Handrei Maraglai of Akadosh Baruch Hu of the of the Kisei Akavai, the Goyim put a Tselam, they put an idol in there. I was, I was trying to find out, by the way, because it keeps coming up. Who, when we put, they put a, a idol in the, in the base of Mikdash, in the Kodesh Hakodashim. So who put an idol in the Kodesh Kodashim? Un, unclear at all. But I started to look into it. It comes in that was it comes, the, the Babylonians did, and then the Greeks did, and the Romans did. And you know, today it's a mask. Um, there, there was always this kind of, uh, you know, idea of putting um, something foreign in the Kodesh Hakodesh. It's, it's fascinating what the obsession of the Goyim are with this. It's 
knock the building down and go away. No. It's, it's like a power struggle for the power of that place, which needs to be explained. But that's our kasha. Like, this is where, the, where heaven touches earth. This is where the kisi HaKavod comes into this world. So, Kineged kisi HaKavod, Selam him lichu, B'chalom tznaya asher choyzai nimlochu, B'nam, and Hashem says, Okay, im b'chu koisai telechu. Because all of this happens, meaning all the bracha that comes into the world, whether it's bracha and gashmis, whether it's bracha and ruchnis, comes from this connection that's coming through the base Hashem. And in b'chu koisai telechu, um, everything is going to be wonderful, like we say in Krishna. And if it's not, um, so answer your own question. And the whole kina, which we read together, um, is back and forth. Where is the bracha? The answer is, well, we didn't do the, our part of the deal. This is the yeka and the ekoi. All over again. Let's just say it together. Is it too cold in here? Is it? Oh, my eleventh thaw. Is it? Is it? Is it too cold or is it me? Huh? No, I'm, I know I'm cold. Let me just put it one degree. Anybody else cold? Maybe just make the fast thing. Inshallah. Yeah, you can just go right there in the back. Just put it up. I think. It's, it's, it's on, you can do it that way, right? I think I'd like to um, move to Kina Yudalif, and here I feel it's, it's extremely important to create some context, some framework for Eicha Eli Koinunume Elov. Eicha Eli Koinunume Elov. 
This is a cry that cries by itself. That's what that means. Like alalai li. And this is a kina. A hespid. By koine near miyahu al yoshiyahu. A kina that near miyahu hanavi sent for Yoshiahu, Hamelech, when Yoshio died. And I've explained this history before and I want to explain it again. It's very important to know. First of all, it's not about Yermiyahu and it's not about Yoshiahu. Something much more basic here. We have to understand something here. That from the time that we were a people, from the time that we went out of Mitzrayim and probably earlier, um, we had, Jewish people had, an obsession with Avodah Zarah. Now, I'm aware of the fact that most of us don't wake up in the morning and say, I'd like to worship some Avodah Zarah today. It's not like we wake up today and said, I'd like to have some coffee, but I can't. It's not like a thing. Worshiping Avodah Zarah is not like a thing right now. But um, from the time of the Egel Hazov, all the way through the time of Chumash, Navi, Suvim, that's all the Nevi'im we're talking about. Stop worshiping Avodah Zarah. They were saying two things. There were two messages. Three. Number one, stop worshiping Avodah Zarah. Number two, do tshuva for worshiping Avodah Zarah. And number three, there's a, there's a possibility of a geulah here. We were always worshiping from Pesel Micha to the Egel Azov to the Tammuz. We were always worshiping Avodah Zarah. I was uh, reminding somebody yesterday that you know one of the one of the, one of the many places uh, it was so basic for us to worship Avodah Zarah, even though we believed in Hashem. By the way, it's like the Rambam says from ancient man, like we couldn't really relate to Hakadosh Baruch Hu so much. So we worship the stars, we worship the moon. We made our little slumim, we made our little Buddhas, we made our little yashkas, we made our little whatever we made. We made, you know, it was just easier maybe um, to meditate and to focus. But uh, you know, here the just one case, many of many cases in Tanakh. Of course, you know, you know, like Elio Hanavi, Bahara Karno. So he was fighting the Navie Habal. The Baal. The Baal was an Avodah Zarah, as you know. Um, and it was a catch-all name for Avodah Zarahs also. Like the, the, the Baal, time of Elion Novi, Achov. Um, but when, when, when the Romans made their temple in Yerushalayim, they called it something else, but it was a Roman word for the Baal. In the time of Elion Novi, the V.A. Baal, the Chumash talks about but the time of Elion Navi, it wasn't Elion Navi who went to Haifa and was fighting with a bunch of Michiganists that were Nevi'e Abal, like a bunch of fanatic Michiganists by them today. That's not what it was. It was the national religion of the state of Israel was to worship the Baal. Like that, you know, I pledge allegiance to the Baal. That was our religion, Jews. <laughs> there were people like Elion Navi, and more than that, that understood Hashem Echad Echad. It wasn't any different than the time of Avram Avinu, where Avram Avinu was born into the base Terach, and he was born to a place of Avodah Zarah. You know, Chazal tell us, you know, the Tammuz was another Avodah Zarah that went through the whole, like the month, went through all of Jewish history. Tammuz was a guy that lived in the time of um, Avram Avinu, as I'll say, and he was put, he, while Avram Avinu was preaching Hashem Echad Echad, monotheism, Mr. Tammuz was preaching polytheism. And really what was going on in that time in history, Rambam speaks about this in, in um, our Nebuchim a little bit, Rapsad Yagoyim mentions this, this is it's in Chazal even, um, and, and you find the later on in history, on Nashim Hayim Evakis HaTammuz, it, it, it was another, it was an Avodah Zarah that we all did. I don't say we, but you know, Mitchilo Oivde Avodah Zarah Hayu Avoseinu. That's what we say in Seder, right? So it wasn't just like a few, like we were obsessed with Avodah Zarah. There's a thing here near Miyahu, 
in Perak Mem Dalad, Yermio went around to warn the people about uh, worshiping Avodah Zarah. It was so endemic. And um, he, he came to this group of women and he told them, stop worshiping Avodah Zarah. You're going to, you know, like we're going to lose the base of Mikdash. We're going to lose everything if you keep up with this Avodah Zarah. You're... And all the people that um, they knew that their wives were doing this of a desire business, you know, like like Lahabdal Allah Fabdalas, you know, like like our wives are sitting with the candles and we're Maswal to Hashem, you know. They were doing Kataris to Avadazara, the Yiddish survivor. I don't know why he blames that on the women, but the men knew that their wives were worshipping Avadazara. They said to your Mio, this that you're telling us that Hashem says that you shouldn't worship Avodah We will not listen to you. We're going to continue doing, now this represented a majority. We're going to continue doing exactly what we're doing Lekater, Limleches, Shamayim, we're going to do our tradition of worshiping Avodah Zarah like we did, like our fathers did. Wow, let me just say that again. Ba'are Yehuda, over Chutzais, Yerushalayim. We're all worshiping Abba Dazar. Vanishba, Vanishba rather, Vanishba Lechem. Kolzman, we're worshiping Abba Dazar, Nishba Lechem, we have so much food. Vaniya Toivim, Vira'a Loi Ra'inu, we never saw anything bad happen as long as we're worshiping Abba Dazar. Umina Az Chadalnu, Lekater Lim Lecha Shemayim. And when we started to listen to you, Yermio, to stop being makdrik teiris to avodah zara, chasar nukol. Everything we lost, lost our foods, we lost our job, we lost our fields. Ubacherev, ubarav tamnu, and then we were attacked by sword and by famine. We are staying with our ways. Your Mio begged them. It goes on to say, I don't want to reading Prokim. You don't understand. Hashem can't stand this anymore. Can't. The whole, you don't understand. The whole Eretz Yisrael is going to be destroyed if you continue to do this. Can't you read? That you're not supposed to worship of Zara? Now I have to tell you, says Yermio, about the Chorban Beis HaMikdash. It goes on and on. You can read it, Perak Mem Dalad. So many places in, in, in Yermio, and so many places in Yeshayahu, and so many places in Sefer Yecheskel, where Anoshim Evakis is Hatamuz. It's hard for us to relate to this, no? Like, that, that throughout the whole history of the Jewish people, all the Nevi'im, the whole bias Rishon, it was this fight about Avodah Zarah. So here's the thing, I think. I think it's really very simple. Simple. I mean, I think it's very easy to explain. Avraham Avinu came into a place, that's our Bris Avram, our forefather, he came into a place where everybody was worshipping Avodah Zarah, and as everybody knows, the Rambam, and he said, how could it be? Do you think that this uh, idol created the world? You know, maybe this idol created even that idol. It can't be. The whole thing doesn't make any sense. not logical. Hashem Echad Echad. I think the Chidush of Avraham Avinu was not, I think people must have realized that the idol didn't create the world. 
even though we know the Madrashim, he broke the idols, and he said the idols broke the idol. We know that. But I think what was really going on there, there were some, you know, probably some intelligent people, was that people felt, as the Rambam says, in Hilchus Avedazar, Perak Aleph, Halach Aleph, people felt that we can't relate to Hashem. Do you understand? Like, in other words, what are we supposed to do? Just stand here and talk to Hashem? Relate to Hashem? Feel God in our lives? So you know, like, Christians can't relate to Hashem. They need a, a yashka. Hindus can't relate to Hashem. The Buddhists can't relate to Hashem. Over to Avodah most people, that's, that's, I, just, I just told you now um, the vast majority of the world. I don't know if they're worshipping idols. Just a little bit. Okay. I don't know if some are worshipping idols, some are not worshipping idols. Maybe it depends what kind of a Catholic you are. But the, the point is that they couldn't relate to Hashem directly. Avram Avinu, and this is so important, Avram Avinu said, hold on a second, Hashem created the world, a love Tishmun, let's listen to him, read the Chumash like Yermiyahu says, and just talk to Hashem. So you know, this is like a ness, that we stand here, Shemun Esrei, every one of us, Shachras, Mincha, Marv, we're not joking around over here, we're talking to Hashem. We're teaching our kids to talk to Hashem. It's like, isn't it weird? <laughs> We're talking to Hashem. It's, it's, it's Kel Chai. We don't have any problem with it all. This is a Ness. It, it's, what this is, this is a Jewish, this is what Avram Avinu contributed to the world. Hashem. Nothing less than Hashem. I always think this like, you know, when you, when you, um, Davin Shmon Esrei, I mentioned this halachic point many times. You Davin Shmon Esrei, so you're not allowed to imagine Hashem, right? Like, let's say you imagine Hashem like has a long white beard or it looks like a big sage. Uh, 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 sir. Hashem doesn't have a beard. Read on him Zemiris. Like, everybody's tried to imagine Hashem in different ways throughout the Durs. It's all wrong. You can't imagine Hashem. Whatever you think, wrong. Thinking about energy, wrong. <laughs> like, however you try to imagine. So you can't imagine Hashem. And then comes the Shulchan Aruch and tells us halacha that when you davening Shemun Esrei, Shivisi Hashem Lenegdi Samin. Just make sure you imagine Hashem right in front of your eyes. Like, what do you want from me? <laughs> I can't imagine Hashem anything. I'm Pana Velakir. And now we're asking every bar mitzvah kid, Shvisi Hashem Lanegdi Summit. Like when you daven, so maybe people have a chap, like like Mishambura says, maybe think about the, the, the letters Yud Kei Vav Kei, and that'll help you be machavin. So it's like, it becomes like a meditation. Some people say the Yud Kei Vav Kei is this way, that like the, your Mishana, the, even the Seder, the Yoisius. Okay, those are tricks. Here's the thing. Here, your bar mitzvah this week. You have a hard time davening? No. Talk to Hashem. So how could it be, how could it be that we're not allowed to imagine Hashem and we have to imagine Hashem? How could it be, Shivisi Hashem Lenegdi Summit, especially when we're davening, it's according to the Reb Chaim Brisker, so he, he has a whole different uh, Torah at the beginning there, that this is the one kavana, which is Ma'akiv the whole tzfilah. Like if you didn't pay attention to some of your tefillahs, okay, don't daven again. But if you if you didn't have the dalif name Miata Oimed, you have to daven again. He says that's ma'akiv the whole tefillah. An impossible task for anybody, a poshut a person, even a god, maybe a god of Andorra knows how to be dalif name Miata Oimed. The answer is, I think this was Avram Avinu's chiddush. If I'm permitted to say a drop that I understand, the chiddush is that not everything you have to understand with your brain. Some things you know you can understand with your heart. Da, leave name to I made. So when we say, Shabisi Hashem Lenegdi Sam, when we say, Shema Yisrael Hashem Alekeinu, Hashem Echad, the reason we're so capable to do that, not only to do it, but to say it every day, not only to say it every day, but to die for this, as so many people in history did, is because Hashem gave us a neshama with which 
we can be masig elikus. And it's possible for us to stand in front of Hashem and to say, Rafainu Hashem, Bnei Rafei, Baruch Aleinu Sashana Azai. It's called Minei Svoas L'Tayra. Can you help my parnasa? We could say, Shema Koleinu Hashem Alekeinu. We could say this. It's a Lubaya. But most Jews in history, as I said, couldn't deal with the Hashem Echad thing. Either they assimilated a Mitzrayim, or they flew into the Egel Hazov, misunderstanding Moshe Rabbeinu to begin with, as the Natsiv and the, and the Malbim say. They misunderstood the whole thing. They dropped right into the Egel Hazov. Or they went further with the Pesel Micha. They took the Pesel Micha straight through the Yamsuf, Chazal say, straight through the Yamsuf. Or they worshipped Avodazara during the time of the Nevi'im, they were Nevi'e, the, 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 the Nevi'e Baal were the priests, but the people were the Baal, and they instituted this through. This was, and, and, and of course, in Bavel, they were worshiping Avodah Zarah, and Huamut Selim Behechel, and all the different places. They wanted to have a Selim Behechel. You remember I asked you before, what's, who's, who's put a, who put an idol in the Hechel? You don't have to turn to a certain, you don't have to Google this. Everybody did, including the Jews. They, 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 they were mixing up even Shlomo Amel by Rechavam. Rechavam, the smoke of Avodah was mixing with the smoke of Hashem. It's like weird. I just, like, don't be in denial of this, at least on Tisha B'Av. We, B'tchila, Oivdei Avodah Zarah, Hayu Avoseinu, until Moshe Rabbeinu came, no, until, I'm sorry, Avram Avinu came, and Yitzhak came, and they said, "Ein zekim beisalikim, b'zeshar shamayim," and we're willing to even sacrifice ourselves, the akeda, for Hashem achadu So here's 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 the. This is so important because if we don't understand what this is, then I'm um, I'm sorry to say we don't. If we don't understand this, we don't understand what it means to be Jewish. Period. Uh, to be Jewish doesn't mean to. To know Kabbalah, it doesn't mean even to do mitzvahs. To be Jewish means that we understand Hashem Echad Echad. We understand what Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov gave us in the Masorah. Please, please, if you're hearing only, remembering one thing that I'm saying, this is the essence of being Jewish, that we can stand in front of Mashkar Baruch and we can say, Shema Koleinu Hashem Aleikeinu. Chus Verachim Aleinu. We can talk right to Hashem. It's Gevald, no? It's not, it's not such a dover pasha to do. Most of the world can't do it. And here's the, another trick. We're supposed to be orla amim, another thing we're in, in denial of, and we're supposed to teach this to people. We're supposed to be the example, either by example or by um, actual teaching or maybe over the internet, I don't know how. But somehow or another, we're supposed to be teaching people to be orla amim. We're supposed to be teaching our children to be orla amim. However, the right way to do that. So, what's the Beis Hamikdash? Follow me here. The Beis Hamikdash is a bias Lashem. There are Bate Avodah all over the place, and there were Bate Avodah Zarah, Rahman al all over Eretz Yisrael. Um, the Kananim had many, many Avodah Zarahs that Hashem warned us about. Shlomo HaMelech came, David, first David. David HaMelech came, go back to basics, and he said, I'm able to identify for you the place where Har HaMariah is and Yitzhak, the Akedah's Yitzhak, and where Yaakov Avinu slept. David HaMelech in Ruach HaKedah was able to identify that this is the place right there, Koisel, Beisem Mikdash. That's the place, Harabayit. That's the place where all that happened. Not only that, not only that, there's a reason why everything happened right there, yeah? The reason everything happened right there, the reason why they were always looking for Hamakoim, for that Makom, not because the future base of Victor's is going to be built there. The reason why we're always looking for that Makom is because that's where the Evan Ashesiyah is. Evan Shasia is that this is where we have in our tradition that Hashem started to create the world. 
created this even. Umimenu hushisa, what's what you see it means. Umimenu hushisa, 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 eskol ha'elam kulay. That's where the world has started from someplace, right? So it wasn't just boom, world started right there on the Harabayas. Avram Avinu went to this Makkah. So Makkah Masher Arekha Hashem said, I'll show you the Makkah. Like, wow, like the holiest spot on earth. What's holy about this spot? Just think, think deeply with me for a minute. What's holy about the spot of the Avon That's just like interest. Okay, I go to the Grand Canyon. I go to the Avon And you're religious, you say, that's where, you know, the dome of the rock. The rock. That's where, that's the rock. What's, what's holy about it is that that's where heaven touched earth. That's where Hashem said, I'm going to create a world and I'm going to be part of this world. I don't know if it exists in Jupiter or Mars. I don't know anything about that. Hashem created it all. But here he said there's going to be Ashra Sashchina. We can think about, like, if they get to Mars, is there Ashra Sashchina? Probably not. Ashra Sashchina is here in the Arabayas. Mimenu Hushasa. Why? Because, not because historical fact that that's where Hashem created the world from, Animamin, but because that was the place where Hashem created the world. Now, that's the place where the Avraham Avinu had to do the Akedah. That's the place where Yitzhak was Neka. That's the place where Yaakov envisioned the Kisei HaKavod. And that's the place where we build the Beis HaMikdash. Now, I just want to give you a break for a second. I want to tell you a quick story. Okay. But uh, one of our sponsors today is my friend Jonathan Barron. Good Jew, wonderful Jew. Learns Tyra, gives tzedakah. So I don't think he minds me saying this. If he does, so we'll delete this little part of the video here. But um, years ago, he said to me, I need uh, some help in business. I don't know anything about business, not, not, not like he knows. He said, No, I need a ruchni sticker fix. I'm not a makubal. <laughs> I wish I was. I wish I knew people come with their tsaras, Yom of Valila. And I just wish there was some kind of a thread I can give them or some kind of a coin I can give them. I don't know how to, <laughs> I didn't take rebel lessons. I'm not a makubal. I don't know how to do this. I can listen. I could hope for siyat to dishmaya. But I said to him, I don't know what you want. I'm not, I'm not, uh, I don't have any schoolers for you. I don't know. So by the way, I, I was, people ask me all the time, also, like, you know, I had a story where I was able to get rid of scorpions from my house. Everybody knows the story. So, um, you know, so uh, everybody's always asking me, do you have a way to get rid of moths? <laughs> do you get a way to get rid of ants? But no. <laughs> don't have anything like that. I don't know anything. Gedavan, siyat to dishmay. So anyways, that's what I told him. So he said, no, I'm looking for a ruchni to fix it. I don't know why it popped into my mind. I saw some place uh, just around then. This was a number of years ago. I said some, saw some place right around then that if you say the Akeda every day, if you say the Akeda, it's, it's, it's a duffer nifla for a skula in the world of gashmius badafka, meaning like uh, your, your fruit will grow better, your business will prosper if you say the Akeda every day. So I said to him, like, I, I said, like we should say the Akeda every day. Like it's like an easy skula to do, to say the Akeda every day. There's no mitzvah to say the Akeda every day, I don't think. But it's like, it's, I don't think it's, it's one of the sheish zechiras, but it, but it's it's a it's a skula. So if you want a school, it's a skula. So he said to me correctly. He said like I'm not going. What am I going to say? The arcade. I don't even know what I'm saying. Like you know what? I'm looking for a school. I'm looking for something spiritual, a fix. So I said to him, so learn the arcade every day. Learn it. Learn it. Be you. Learn what? Learn every Rashi on the arcade. So he said, okay, but I don't know how to learn so good. So I said, I'll tell you what, I'll learn with you the Akeda. I also want to learn the Akeda. So I'll learn with you the Akeda. And for, I don't know, maybe a year, every day, we learned the Akeda together. And his business problems were over Baruch Hashem, sponsoring the event. <laughs> now, 
I finished learning the Akedah like after maybe eight months or a year. He's still learning the Akedah. <laughs> I would say he's probably the biggest expert in the Akedah in the world. I don't think anybody knows the Akedah like he knows. Every Rabbeinu Bechaye, every Ramban, every Diuk, every Kina, every Slicha, he understands all the Slichas where the Akedah is brought, which is all the Slichas every single day there's Akedah. He knows everything about the Akedah. If you want to know anything about not only that, but um, if, if, if anything, any Parsha of the week, let's say it's Parsha's, um, you know, uh, Parsha's Chukas, Parajuma, oh, that's because of the Akedah. Like whatever is going on in the Jewish calendar, in the Parshas Hashavua, or in history, it all relates to the Akedah. When you hear him, he's right. He is an Akedologist. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm seeing. I don't know in history if anybody knew the Akedah. Like, like he knows the Akedah. I mean, you'd have to say then that the Rabban knew every Rabbeinu Bachaya. <laughs> he knows both. Okay, I'm just saying. It's a it's a school of what's the Indian of the Akedah. <laughs> Let me just like okay in, in one second. What what's 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 the nakuda of the akeda? The nakuda of the akeda is that here we have Hara Maria, a makom asher areka. Here you have the makom of the akeda, the makom of of the shechina, the makom of, of the Avin Ashusia, where Hashem created the world. This is where Hashem connects heaven and earth. So if you want Hashem to create to to, to connect heaven and earth. Avram Avinu, go take your son Yitzhak and be makr of him, al Gabi Amazbeach, on the Evan Hashasiyah, in the Harabais. And if you want to have a chaloim and understand Yaakov Avinu, the, the Kisei Akavite, here's your place. Evan Hashasiyah, that's the ladder that goes between Shemayim and Aretz. And if, Shlom David HaMelech, if you want to build the Beis HaMikdash, which is a bias la Hashem against everything that the Oiv Dei Avodah Zarah are saying, here's your bias la Hashem. Build it right here. On this makam. And that's the makam of the Harabayas. Now, um, Kozman, that we're going, B'chukaisai Telechu, this is so fundamental because this is what being Jewish is. As I said at the very beginning, like this is real yunta for me. It's a real moed, my favorite holiday, because I start to understand what it means to be Jewish in a davar pashit. And it's a davar pashit that if we're doing our job of living in front of Hashem, if we're doing our job of teaching our children and everyone we can, that it's just Hashem, you don't need any getchkas here. You don't need any psalim, you don't need any skulas. You really don't need anything. You need to daven Shemun Esrei. And, and you have to say, Shema Yisrael Hashem Aleikeinu Hashem Echad. And that's all, just be makabal o malchus shemayim. And it's a nest that we don't need anything else. But it was very difficult for Klal Yisrael throughout all generations, maybe even today in a certain way, to be Makabaldus. So we were worshiping Avodah Zarah. So Yirmiyahu is saying that we have one place in the world, there's a lot of houses of Avodah Zarah around, in Eretz Yisrael and all over the world, I'll call Haharim voice. There's so many places of Avodah Zarah. There's going to be one mountain, which is a mountain for Hashem, where the world was created. And if you want that mountain to be preserved... If you want the Beis HaMikdash to stand there the way it did with the Asar Nisim, Shahaya, in the Beis HaMikdash, then B'nai Yisrael, you got to let go of the Avodah Zarah. And this was the words of the Nevi'im from Moshe Rabbeinu all the way until the last Nevi'im, Chag Yitzchari Malachi. This was, the, this was the words of the Nevi'im all the way up really until the time of the Anshei Knesset Sagdola and the Bayasheni. This was the Nisayan, the Nisayan was Avodah Zarah. This was the Nichshel, this was the Charbon by Yisrishan, the Charbon by Yisheni, the Charbon Shiloi, the Charbon, even Betar maybe, was a Charbon of Avodah Zarah. We, we, we can only have a bias Lashem if we believe in Hashem. That's how basic it is. If you believe in Hashem, you have a bias Lashem. So let me just talk about Yirmiyahu here for a minute and why he's the most important person. First of all, he wrote Eicha. So he's not just the star of the show on Tisha B'Av because he wrote the Megillah. That's first of all. But, but his whole life was devoted to stopping people 
from worshiping Avodah Zarah, as we see in Parak Mem Dalet and Parak Mem Vav, as we see throughout throughout Tanakh, Irmio was devoted devoted his life, very simply, to get people to stop worshiping Avodah Zarah, or the base Hashem you'll see will disappear. And when that base Hashem, it really was a base Hashem, because in the time of the Bayis Rishon, you know the the Aron Kodesh um, was Eino Min Amida, meaning if you take all the Masechta Midas, all the Midas of the of the Kodesh Kodeshim. Um, the, the arm doesn't even fit in. Ain't no minamida. Didn't even take up any room. This is a, something which the seichel can't even be masik. How does it the matter shouldn't take up any room? But it was a it was a, it was a makam of the of, of Hashem in this world to base Hashem. There was a little place in this world, Dalad al Dalad, where it was mechil Hashem. Not without the philosophy of Tzimtzum, it was mechil Hashem. Ain't no minamida. Doesn't even count in terms of Gashmias. So Yermio was talking about this and. Um, it was not working so well from before Yirmiyahu. We were worshiping Avodah Zarah. So um, finally we had a melech, and this is the brief history of the Jewish people in the Bayes Rishai. David, Shlomo, a lot of kings, some Asher Asa, Satoib, Cain, Bein Hashem, Kid, Aviv David, some did like David Amelach, some didn't do like David Amelach, some fell right into the Avodah Zarah. Chizkiyo was a good king. Chizkiyo was a Melech that they said, he'll get rid of Avodah Zarah, and he did. To a great extent, he got rid of Avodah Zarah. First of all, he outlawed it. Second of all, more important than that, he taught Torah to everywhere. He made yeshivas everywhere. Everybody, every, every kid knew Kachim and Tyrus. It was an amazing thing, amazing. Eretz Yisrael was amazing during the, during the time of King Chizkiyahu. That was the time of Yeshayahu Hanavi, and things were pretty good. And Chashvu, and everybody thought, you know what? All the Avodah Zarah in history, Chashvu Chizkiyahu Shehu Mashiach. They thought Chizkiyahu might be the Mashiach. What does it mean the Mashiach is here? If we could finally get rid of all the Avodah Zarah, it doesn't mean anything more than that. All me. If we could finally get rid of all the Avodah Zarah, and there's, there's a critical mass of Jews that are worshiping Hashem, Hashem Echad, Ushmai Echad. And then we have the space of Mikdash in Yerushalayim, which becomes totally the base Hashem. So then we could have the Geula, and we could take this religion called Judaism, which is all based on the Evan HaShesia and the base Hashem and Avram and Yitzhak and Yaakov, and it could take over the world, and we could have Mashiach. And Yeshayo saw this in Chizkiyahu, but it failed. He was a failed Mashiach. Not that he wasn't a tzaddik. He was a tzaddik. It wasn't the time. And we all know the story that Chizkiyo had a son, Menashe HaMelech. Asher says, Hashem. And Menashe HaMelech did not go Bederach. His father, Chizkiyo, lo Bederach, David, Aviv. He was a, he was a great-grandson of David HaMelech, Menashe. But he... he um, he, was, he instituted Avodah Zarah, meaning, you know, why? First of all, just like we find throughout Tanakh, that they thought Avodah Zarah was a good skula. Like, things work better. Things go better with Avodah Zarah. That was what he thought, first of all. Second of all, you know, they went so far as to say, this is what our fathers and our grandfathers did in all of Eretz Yisrael and in Ari Yehuda, B'chut Seis Yerushalayim. Who am I to stop Avodah Zarah? So first of all, he went back to Avodah Zarah legally. Once again, just like by the time of Achav and Izevel, it became, the, um, it became the, the, the law of the land. He, he hated the Chachomim that were still there from the time of Chizkiyahu that were teaching people about Hashem Echad Ushmai Echad V'hargu Kol HaChachomim Pe'el Peh. Echazal Pe'el Peh. Argus Yerushalayim, Pel Pei, killed all the Chachamim in Yerushalayim. Anybody who, who said Hashem Echad Ushmai Echad said, Grisha in the morning, Menashe killed you, including his grandfather, Yeshayo Amelech. His grandfather. Because Yeshayo was a Mechudan with Chizkiyo. Yeshayo Anavi. I'm sorry. So he killed him too. Chizkiyo Amelech. Yeshayo Anavi. Is that what it is? Pel Peh, killed, killed Yishayo also. Um, and he was a horrible person, and he brought Avodah Zarah right back to where it was. It's hard to understand, it's hard to explain, but it's not so hard to understand if you understand that Avodah Zarah was the default position of the Jewish people. We have to be careful about this. 
Rabbi Nazar was the default position. You know, the, the Gemara tells the story that um, the Ravashi was uh, giving shear at Ravashi, who ended the Talmud Bavli. He was giving shear in Yeshiva, and he was giving shear on Menashe HaMelech, talking about Menashe HaMelech, and you're supposed to make fun of, you're supposed to, to, to knock Oivdi Avodazar. So he was knocking Menashe, look at the idiot Menashe was, he was instituted Avodazar, killed Chachamim, terrible. So the Gemara says that uh, the next day Ravashi reported that that, uh, that Menashe HaMelech, Ravashi, reported that Menashe HaMelech came to him in a dream and, and admonished him. And he said, you, you Ravashi, you're nothing, I tell you, you're klum shiba klum compared to me. You don't come to my madreg at all. Told him the strange thing, he says, you don't even know how to do but see a pass properly. So he told him in his dream, you know, not like, you know how you cut the challah um, on, on Friday night. He said, you don't even do that correctly. And he says, and if you would have been in my time, <laughs> Ravashi, if you would have been in my time, you would have been running to Avodazara faster than me. You would have picked up your you're, you would have rolled up your pants and rolled up your sleeves and done some of it as Zara. Like it was Ravashi wakes up in the morning, my gosh. Like we don't have the Nisayan. He told us, tell me them the next day. <laughs> I'm not messing with Menashe anymore. It's hard for us to understand. I mean, it's not hard. It's impossible for us to understand that this was the derech and this was the pull and this was the harbin of the Beis Hamikdash. That was Chizkiyo, that was Menashe. And then Menashe had a son, Yoshiahu, grandson. Yoshiahu, this is who this kina is about. Yoshiahu is the main character here, not just in this, but Chazal uh, saying all the, all the tsarists of Klai Yisrael, all the good times and the bad times, but it's also the main character of Echa. Ruach HaPeinu Mashiach Hashem. Right, we said last night. That was, Zu Yoshio, Rashi says. So Yoshio, right, Konin Yermio Al Yoshio, Ben Shmoyna Shana Hecha Lidrash Melikov. When he was eight years old, Shlusav was, Sof Kol Sof, he started to think about Hashem. Not about anything else, he just started to think about Hashem. And he once again made the religion of Israel, he made Israel a Jewish country. Jewish from Avram Avinu country. And, you know, once again, he forbade any kind of Avodah Zarah. And once again, through the whole story with the Sefer Torah, he made sure that everyone in Eretz Yisrael is learning Torah. And Yermio said about him, Ruach HaPeinu Mashiach Hashem. Yoshio, finally, finally, this was at the end. Yoshio died, as the Kina explains here, 22 years before the Chorban, by Yisrisha. So that's when Yoshio died. He was a king for, I think, 33 years. He was a young, young man. He was eight years old, he became a Balchuva, and he created a Balchuva movement throughout Eretz Yisrael. Um, Yermio said, after all the suffered of Zara, maybe there's a hope for the Jewish people. After Chizkiah, with Chizkiah, Yeshayo thought there would be some hope, but, there, but it didn't work out. Menashe messed up everything. Now maybe with Yoshio, Mashiach Hashem. Just want to touch for you, what's the pshat? Ruach HaPeinu. Mashiach Hashem. Anyone know what the words mean? Ruach HaPeinu Mashiach Hashem refers to the fact that the way we're built is nefesh, ruach, neshama. The nefesh is pretty much like our personalities, our life when, when, um, when, you, when we die. So it's Yisiyas HaNefesh, not the neshama, nefesh. And then there's the ruach, ba'yipach, ba'apav, nishmas chayim, so ruach memalala, Ruach is the, is, is the breath which Hashem breathed into us and connected us to the neshama, naran. So it starts nefesh, ruach, neshama, or our chiyus in life comes from neshama, ruach, nefesh. The importance of this is right now, the reason I'm saying this, is that the pshat Mashiach is to be ruach apenu because he's connecting the shamayim and the arts. Like the ruach connects the neshama and the nefesh. 
Got it? That's the Ruach HaPeinu Mashiach Hashem. That is there going to be a Mashiach, which is finally going to connect Eretz Yisrael and Kla Yisrael with Avinu Shabbat Shomayim. So Yermio said about Yoshio, Ruach HaPeinu Mashiach Hashem. This is Mashiach. He was a king. I don't know if he was a great gon. I don't know, if, I don't know what he was, you know. But like the Rambam says, to be Mashiach, like Rambam makes this point that Rabbi Kiva thought Bar Kochba was Mashiach. It can be Mashiach. Mashiach means that you're getting the country to be Jewish. Let me, let me just make the important point that I always make that I don't think Loi um, he Mashiach, everybody thinks Mashiach is going to be like, how can this happen right now? The world is so full of tsaris, this thing's going to come from Shemaim. Mashiach, I can't tell you how many people told me in the last three days that um, if Mashiach comes, we won't have to go to your kinos. Uh, <laughs> it was like the biggest uh, drive for Mashiach. <laughs> I don't have to do Tisha B'Av, I don't have to do Kinos. I'm here anyway, I'll tell you. <laughs> Here's Hashem, I'll sit on, I'll sit on a higher chair and drink a cup of coffee. But this is Karolai uh, Moyed, to talk about Mashiach. But um, Mashiach, it just, like today, you know, we can, I'm not a politician, everybody knows I'm not political, I don't, I don't care about the whole thing so much, I try not to care. But, I mean, today, like, we could be massive. Like, here, we're in a situation in Eretz Yisrael, I mention all the time, that one of the, one of the conditions for the Gula is Rav Yisrael Alad Masam. So probably today, we're at Rav Yisrael Alad Masam. I mean, just to do a population survey of where Jews live, most Jews that are actually Jews probably live in Eretz Yisrael. There's many Jews in America that are going between patrilineal descent and between uh, uh, reform conversion not Jewish to begin with. So there's Jews, of course there's Jews in, in, all over America, but I think the majority of Jews uh, live here in Eretz Yisrael. And we can be massing that we have some independence, Baruch Hashem, so far here in Eretz Yisrael. Hashem should help us forever that we should always uh, be here in Eretz Yisrael without any problems. Um, but 70 years or so, like we still have some, we still have to be careful. Um, and Mashiach means that there's a government and that a leader comes up, the Yatza, um, after Meishai, like Yishayo says, that somebody comes up, and it might not be somebody who we're expecting, maybe a Yoshio who did, did Shuva when he was eight years old, or not necessarily somebody who we're expecting, not a famous politician or even a famous Gadol. It doesn't have to be uh, Reb Chaim Kanyevsky or a Lubavitcher Rebbe, it doesn't have to be. Somebody comes up. And he has the right idea as to how to lead this country. We can't fit, okay, right? Election after election. After. So let's say somebody would come up. It's not hard to imagine, is it? That somebody come up, maybe sitting here in the room, who, who can get up and have the right idea to how to lead the country. But people, not that it's dumb, like everybody's got ideas, but how to make it a Jewish country, how to make it that every, the, the, like the Beis Yosef wanted that the, the, the constitution of the state of Israel is the Shulchan Aruch with the Hagois Harama. <laughs> like, we're going to have the Shulchan Aruch. And he's going to be able to gain the respect of all the people. Can you imagine such a thing? It's too hard to imagine. It's easier to imagine like some fire comes down from Shemaim with a building. <laughs> But it's not hard for me to imagine. Like, please do this with me. Like, if this can happen today. This is much the right time. That somebody could come forward, we'll work on his yichus, and say, let's live according to the Torah. Let's live according to Yiddishkeit. We have a, we're here for a reason. We're not, in, we're not in Portugal, and we're not in Poland, and we're not in Czechoslovakia, and we're not in Canada, and we're not in the United States. We're here in Eretz Yisrael, Eretz HaKadosh. You go down, the, go down the street for 25 minutes in your car, and you see the Evan HaShasiyah. This is a place of Hara Maria. Like, can this one little country be Jewish? And, and a miracle will happen. This is the miracle of the Gula that people will listen to him because he's reasonable and because it makes sense and maybe because he has chashvil or bar chashvil Mashiach because he was a melech he came with malchus he had leadership skills to be able to do this another ness happens all the nations of the world they're ready for this you know 
like the Rambam says, like the one good thing about Christianity was that he, he took a lot of people off of Avodah per se. So if they're not into Avodah per se, and, and how many millions of them are even supporting Israel, whole organizations supporting Israel, I'm not. I'm, I want to give. I want to give everybody a little hope. I'm not making. I'm not running for prime minister. I'm not. <laughs> I'm, not I'm not interested in the, in the whole thing per se. Is the politics, but what I, what I'm so interested in, I'm so waiting for, and I'm so sure this can happen in our lifetime right now. That all it takes. We're here. We have. We have uh, kibbutz Goliaths. We have the place. We have the skyscrapers. We have the economy. We have the Jews. We have the yeshivas. We have the bate dinim. We have the high tech. We have everything except for that leader. And then the leader can come and he can build a base of Mikdash. Right there, Allah Makom. We have the place. We have the technology. And he can build a base of Mikdash. And the base of Mikdash, by the way, doesn't even have to be made out of those big stones. And the base of Mikdash can be made out of glass. Look at the halacha. The base of Mikdash could look like a beautiful, the most beautiful... T- the most beautiful edifice in the world, high tech, with with the highest level of internet. <laughs> it's also hard to imagine. <laughs> no, because I don't know if we can get through the stone walls, but they could. I, mean, I sit, I sit, and I dr- I dream, and I think I, maybe I'm a Michigana, but I sit and I dream and I think about what the base of Mikdash can look like. But more important, the base of Mikdash can look like is what that leader can look like. I know exactly what it can look like. It's not such a miracle. Just, just hashkoch is Hashem. Needs hashkoch pratis. And we need to be zoche. How we zoche to such a time. How we zoche to such a geula. Should be mamish, like today. Could be today. Election's coming up today. Right guy gets up. How we zoche to this? Shema Yisrael Hashem alikeinu Hashem echad. That's how we're zoche to it. Our job, get rid of the Avodah Zarah. Yermio comes along and he says, Avodah Zarah is such a problem. Finally, with Yoshio HaMelech, we got rid of the Avodah Zarah. Now Mashiach could come. And what happened? Look at, look at the first two paragraphs here. Ben Shmaina Shana Hecha Lidraish Melikov. Eight years old, he started to look for Hashem. Nechem, that's the Egyptians. But Avram Chanu Alav. I'll tell you the story in a minute. Vleihusker leishigu mifalav and Yoshiel made a mistake. He made an error. But this is the point I wanted to say. Gam b'chol malchay Yisrael asher kamu ligdar like kamu kamayu b'kimayis avigdar. From the time of the history of the world, there was nobody since Moshe Rabbeinu that was like Yoshiel Amelach. Avigdar is Moshe is Moshe Rabbeinu. What was his name? That's a pretty big statement. All the Malchei Yisrael that came, even Chizkiyo, that came to be Magdir Geder, like Kam Kamayu Miyamais Avigdor. That means like David, even David Amelch, right? But, and here's, here's this, underline this in your kinos. Davak boy chait leitzonei hador. Asher kamo acher adelas listor. What happened was, as the, as the explained to us in, in Sefer Yirmiyahu, that even though the national religion here was Judaism and monotheism, and we daven to Hashem, and we went to Shul, and we learned Torah, nevertheless, we just somehow, the Jews could not lose that little, those little getchkalach, the little of a Zorah, that we kept either in our homes or in our heart. And here, means that we put the Avodah in a place in our house where the Avodah police of Yoshio couldn't find them. So what'd they do? It's described in Tanakh that, uh, you know, when you, like, imagine a door, like the big doors that open, like, you know, the doors to the base of Mikdash, you know, the doors that open, so people had their doors. We've got to start talking about the base of Mikdash pretty soon. But <laughs> the people had their, door, their doors, and when, the, when they would open, the, they would put the Avodah Zarah, like imagine a cross, which according to some is exactly what their Avodah Zarah was. Not the Christian cross, but a cross, old Avodah Zarah. The cross was on the, on the groove between the two doors where the doors come together. And Pomikan, or Pomikan, in other words, Yashka was already buried on a crucifix. They were into it before. 
So here, here's, the, here's, the, here's the cross, and when you open the door, there's no Avodah Zar. So the police would come in and say, do you have any Avodah Zar in this house? We have a warrant to um, search, and no Avodah Zar here. But in their, in their homes and in their hearts, it's hard for us to understand this. They still couldn't get let go of this Avodah Zar, like it says in Yirmiyahu. They just couldn't get it, they couldn't lose it. So Yoshiahu legislated monotheism, but he couldn't, and enforced it, but he just couldn't get it out of people's minds and out of people's hearts. I don't. I think you got to be careful today, also. Like you know, like there's okay. The Anshik Jessa came, came along and they helped us out with this one, but still, like you know, we're still looking always for a, a person or a way or a segula or a something like everything. Just Avin Shmonesre, say Shema, be Makabel Omalchus Shemayim. That's what we need to do. That's the schoola here. There's no schoola bigger than davening in front of Hashem. Um, Bnei Cham Ba'avram Chano Alav. And this brings us into another important point, and then we get into this destruction itself. But here's what Yermio said. This is Yermio's words. He said that, um, you know, Israel, we know the history here, Israel stands between Egypt down south and Bavel up north. Uh, Iraq, Egypt. And Israel was always the, the way you get from one to the other, land bridge where you get from one to the other. So Israel, little Israel, which is, you know, nothing important from a geographic point of view, but it was important to the biggest nation, to the super, superpowers of the world, still is, interestingly. Um, Hashem situated Eretz Yisrael in a place between the superpowers, Iran, Iraq um, on the top, Bavel on the top, and Mitzrayim, Egypt on the bottom, and here's Israel in the middle. And Yoshia, that's why the Torah says that when Mashiach comes, when there's a gula, that no sword will pass through this land, which was, which was um, unnatural for Eretz Israel, because all swords will pass through this land. Right here where we are. This is the, this is the battleground for the big superpowers. So there's a, there's a view, there's a vision, where this is not going to be the battleground, this is going to be the, the source of, of light for all those nations. So um, there's a war going on between, there was a war going on between Iraq and Egypt. There's Bavel and, and Mitzrayim. And each one of them was trying to um, create an ally in the state of Israel so that they could better attack their enemy. That's what was going on in the world of Gashmias at that time, in the in military history. So here's, here's the, this one's talking to Eretz Yisrael, this one's talking to Eretz Yisrael. Whoever wins the heart of Eretz Yisrael, so wins the war. Um, Yirmiyahu had a Nevua, and therefore a Shita, that we should go with, Yirmi, with, with Bavel. We should, we should support Bavel. Um, others had a Shita, we should support Mitzrayim. Yoshiahu had a shita, the from shita, was like, so ever care of We're not supporting anything. This is going to, the Mashiach is here. I'm Mashiach, right? We don't, we, don't, we don't need to support this one, that. No war is coming through here. Yermio told them, listen, Mashiach's not here yet. Maybe, but there's still a Golos, and you still have to be like, smart that way. And I'm, I'm telling you, best thing is to go with Bavel. Um, you need Bavel's protection from Egypt. Anyways, that was what was going back and forth. He wouldn't let the Egyptians in. He wouldn't let the Babylonians in. The Egyptians came through. They, they tried to speak with Yoshiahu HaMelech. They, he wouldn't let, no, no, you can't come through our land. You can't use our airspace. You can't use our land space. And what happened was that the Egyptians slaughtered Yoshiahu, literally. They slaughtered him. What's the pshat? The pshat is that he could have been Mashiach, Ruach HaPenu Mashiach Hashem, but the Gula wasn't here yet. Why wasn't the Gula here yet? Because there were still people worshiping Avodah Zarah. So what was happening over here is that Yoshio was a little bit ahead of himself and thought that he had accomplished, I'm just saying it in a way that we could understand that these, these were great men, but he thought he had accomplished what Yermio was telling him he didn't accomplish. So the Egyptians came in, and uh, the first thing they did the first thing, but they immediately went as a matara, as, as he calls their target, assassination, was Yoshiahu. 
and diminish the spirit of the of Bnei Yisrael, of, the, of Malchus Yisrael that was here. Um, it diminished our spirit. And uh, the Egyptians basically took over. And then we had other kings under Egyptian rule, which, which we can speak about in, in a few minutes. But that's what happened to Yoshio. The Kina and the Hespit of Yermio is just a continuation of Echa, Echo, Vayikone Yermio al Yoshiohu. Yermio was saying to the people that don't you see that even where we have uh, uh, everything in place for a Mashiach, we have the land, we have the malchus, we have the money, we have the man. you got to let go of the Avodah Zarah. And if you can't go to the Avodah Zarah, it doesn't make a difference if it's hiding in your, in your, behind your door, if it's hiding in your heart. It doesn't make any difference. If you have anything except for the achtos of Hashem in your mind, if there's any go-to place, you're stopping the gula, and you're messing up your life. So your mio, it was a military thing, and of course, it was a spiritual thing where the Ruach was messed up. And then it was Paro Nechoi. They were all called Paro, right? We know, but the Paro in Chumash was Paro Nechoi. It was Paro number 26 in Egypt, by the way. Paro, the 26th Paro, um, the Chinese guy. Um, so Paro Nechoi uh, came, came and he slaughtered and took over. And then, of course, Yermio was right that Egyptians fought with the Babylonians in Eretz Yisrael. That was the war that was going on um, before the Chorban. And as Yermio said, if you're going to support anybody, support the Malchus Bavel, because they're the ones who, in Golos, we should support. Um, the Malchus Yisrael, after Yoshio, didn't do that, um, and came out the Chorban Beis Amikdash and the Golos Bavel. That's why that happened. So, so um, we, this time of Yoshio was like the best of all times and the worst of all times. Best of all times because we had Mashiach. It was the worst of all times because we, we got cocky with our, uh, who we thought we were. And then it, it just went down from there. Um, from the time that the, the Egyptians killed Yoshio, um, in the Kina here it says it was 22 years. Yoshio's Aleph base. Lots to talk about with the Yosias Aleph base, but it was Yosias Aleph base. Eretz Yisrael listed and lived another 22 years until we were taken over by Nebuchadnezzar and Nebuzradon and the and the Harbin base of Migdash and the Egyptians were killed and everybody was thrown out of there and we were in Golis Al Nares Bavel. Sham Yashamf Nugam Bochinu. We didn't listen to Yermio Navi. So Yermio Navi was that the Navi of the last chance. Yermiyah Navi was the Navi of the of disappointment because the the, the prophet of, of of doom, where he was telling us what was going to happen, and exactly even Yoshio um, didn't listen, and exactly as as Yermio said, that's what happened. So we'll say this together. Should I open the blinds or do you want to keep it up? Better open. Oh, I don't know. Yes, sure. 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 Yes, Suru heido aloshia vimanu suru mati soy nushia pnei krav bekarv loy also loy retia by yiru hamorim lamelach yoshiyahu. I don't know why it's a main of a gev yoy no yatsam chetz acher chetz morim beloy chatzin. Point out to you once again the chat inside. Mechatois tiras mezuzais refers to the avodah zara that was they were hiding in their houses, 
by Yoyer Amorim Lamalach Yoshio, and they shot arrows at Yoshio, and it says, Chetzach her Chetz, Moirim Velechzim. It was Chetzach her Chetz, they shot at him. He was assassinated, he was, he was uh, slaughtered. Um, this holy man, Yoshio, was Kematar Lechitzim. He became a target, you know, for, for arrows. But Yisraku by Shloish Meyos Chitzim. They shot him 300 times. And um, then we say, as, as he was dying, they bent down and they listened to him. Ruach Svasav Hifsami Piu. And they listened to the words that he was saying so low because he hardly had any life left. And he said, Sadik Hu Hashem. But he said, Tzadik Hu Hashem, ki mirisu, ki marisi pihu. Hashem is the Tzadik, I didn't listen. What does he mean he didn't listen? He didn't listen to Das Torah. He didn't listen to, to, to Yirmiyahu. Navi knows. Um, and here it says, Tola ba'esher mushtaya, they left, uh, they left Eretz Yisrael, Eretz Yisrael, Hashem left Eretz Yisrael, be for another 22 years, could have been destroyed right then. Ki safru lo eicha ba'esher mushtaya moesiyos, now, how Echa goes in the Seder of Aleph base, and we're always on um, the 22 Oisios. I just must say this briefly in a sentence that the Pshat and Oisios, um, like the world was created with Oisios. The world was created with the Aleph base, Gimel Dalad Hay. Um, you know, you, you don't really need to have you know, an alphabet. You can just look at it and know how to read. Today, when they teach kids how to read Hebrew, you don't even have to tell them Aleph Beis, hey, it's Gimel Dalad. You don't have to tell them that anymore. You just tell them this says Ah, and this says Ba. This says Gimel. But Hashem created the world with Aleph Beis, meaning Aleph Beis, those letters, were the first, um, you know, when Hashem breathed life into the world, the first of articulation of any type of Gashmias, from the Ruchnias into the Gashmias, the Ruach, was Aleph Beis, Gimel Dalad, Hey. From that it became words, and from words it became sentences, and sentences it became concepts. But the beginning of the Bria was the Oisius Aleph base, and that's why the whole Echas in Seder Aleph base, the whole Kinois is in the Seder Aleph base. But here he says that, that Yoshio taught Torah of a Seder Aleph base. And therefore, because of that, and that's first, the, the Eretz Israel lasted another 22 years. Ko Oisius Aleph base, Tola Be'esri Mushtayim, Meharai Shosais, from destroying the base of Migdash. And that's why the, the Eicha has 22 letters of Oisius. Oisius Kinois, Oisius Kinois, Lubata Mechoili. Al Kishachachti Mechoili. Because there was a small period of time where we, we, we took our eye off the ball. And we kept on worshiping Avodazar. We were almost there. Shem should help. Let's read Yud Beis quickly. Uh, Yud Beis is the where Rabbi Lazar Akalir speaks about Ohali Asher Toavta Ad Lebreshus Im Kisei Kavod Lazarifais. This is a direct hit. This kina on the concept that Kenega the Yerushalayim Shemata right here is the Yerushalayim Shemala. Kenega it's Eretz Yisrael Bechlal where we're sitting is the Eretz Yisrael Shemala. Means to say that what we're mechuvin here. This is where heaven touched earth. This is the Beis HaMikdash. This is the Makam HaMikdash, Eretz Yisrael. There's a lot of different levels of Kedusha. Um, so this is the Oli Asher Toafta. This is the oil Moyed, the, the, the tent of meeting. That's what, that's what Karalai Moyed really means. This is this Eretz Yisrael, this Yerushalayim, this Beis HaMikdash, this Harabayis, is the place Asher Toafta, a Loiberashis, in Kisei Kavad Latsarfa, just to internalize those words, because that's the cap, the, the captures the whole uh, kina over here. This Hashem, you created the whole world just for this, that the Kisei Kavad should have a makom here in this world. That's Ahali, and you destroyed it. Yud Beis Ahali Asher Toavta and Liberations in Kisei Kavad Latsarfa. Holy Asher, come Oh, yeah, I should have
I'm going to go straight into Kina Yudalad, which I explained already, so I don't have to explain it again. But this Kina talks about the fact that it was wired right into the Bria of the Harbin. And I explained it, which, um, which I think is the MS, that it's not shot that there had to be a, a, a Harbin based on Mikdash, but the shot is that all these parts and all these pieces, like a puzzle, fell into the world. And it was our job to sort them out correctly and choose the right things. And if you don't, you say, Moshe, you get electrocuted. <laughs> Can't put the wrong things together. So, uh, the, yes, there was Or, there was Choshech, Vayer, Vayiboyker. There was, there, was, there was all kinds of energies in the world. Our job as Jews is to, is to bring it all together to worship Hashem. Hashem Achad, Ushmoy Achad at the end. So it was programmed in the Bria, but it was our job to, un, to build it, you know? So we have to build the world like an Ikea thing. And this is what the Kina Yudalot is about. Eicha.
while you're doing this, let me just point out something very important. Where it's the mem, this all goes, of course, in the order of Aleph base. And um, by the mem, Mimara Megila Kosa Venehi, Kinam Vehegavihi, Miza Amar Vatehi. So um, what that means is with Ruach HaKodesh Mimara, Megila Kosa Yermio wrote the Megila Zeicha. Venehi, and he cried. Kinam Vehegavihi. This is the. Um, Important for us to understand, if we're going to understand anything here, is to understand the Megillus Eicha, which is the whole thing, the whole Tisha B'Av is all about. The Yermio told us that we can say Eicha. We can ask, how is Hashem doing this to us? The whole Eliezer HaKalir, which decided on this idea of Kinos, don't know if there were Kinos before him, um, there was Kinos after him added, but he wrote that we have 22 Kinos, and that's the Iker of Kinos, Eliezer HaKalir, is all based on Eicha. Pasuk by Pasuk on Eicha. He said, take the morning and expand upon Eicha. At night, we read Eicha. Eicha was written by Yermiyahu 24 years before the Harbin Bayis Rishon. 24 years before the Harbin Bayis Rishon, was saying, time of Yoshiyahu, and then part of it after Yoshiyahu died. Eicha Yashva Badad Ha'ir Abbasiyam. Like, he jumped the gun on this one, talking about the Harbin Beis Amikdash, when there was no Harbin Beis Amikdash. What it was, Eicha, it's just important for us to understand, Eicha was not a lamentations, it was a prophecy that if we don't shape up, we're going to be, how are we going to live? How are we going to stand? It was a prophecy of destruction. That's what Eicha was. Eicha Yashabad, well, how do I know this? Because it all says Mephorsh and Tanakh, and say, we just said it here, Mimurim Megillah Kosev and Nehi. This was Ruach HaKodesh, and um, the, the, in Yermiyahu, Parach Lamed Vav, talks about Yermiyahu going from place to place, begging people to leave their Avodah and to worship God. Um, and that was the time after Yoshiyahu, was the time, says in Tanakh over here, Lachen Koyamar Hashem al Yoyakam. It was a time. of Yoyakim, who was then the king of Israel. That was the son of Yoshiyahu. Son and a grandson, Yoyakim, that, that created, the, that was during the Chorban. So, the king of Israel says exactly when this was, like it was during the winter. That's when the story that I'm about to tell you very short in a very short version of it happened. It was winter time in Israel, and it was cold in Israel, but the Melech was Yoyakim after Yoshiyahu died, so it was 22 years before the Chorban. Um, the Melech was sitting in his winter palace in Ramat Rachel. If you go today to Ramat Rachel, you'll see the excavations, archaeological excavations of the Winter Palace of Yoyakim. That's where he went. It was a warmer in Ramat Rachel than it was in Yerushalayim? I don't know. But um, the, the way it's described over here, that he, he had um, in a beautiful view, he could see um, um, it was It's a wonderful place to be. It was a little bit outside of Yerushalayim. And he had a ha'ach bayar lefanov had a huge fireplace, so he was comfortable. But in this place of comfort, Melech, he was a Melech, his, his, his Malchus was being supported at that time by the Egyptians. So what happened was that after they killed Yoshiyahu, they took over Eretz Yisrael, um, just like um, the Ottoman Empire, the British Empire, you know, American Empire. <laughs> you take over Eretz Yisrael, and the king of Israel became the king, the Melech Mitam. You know? like he became really the shaliach of the superpower, the Egyptians that were saying, we'll take care of you, and we'll give you a nice house, and we'll give you leadership, and you'll be like the governor of this land. But we Egyptians were the ones that are in charge. Of course, the Egyptians later lost to the Babylonians, hence the Chorban Beis Mikdash. But Yoachim uh, HaMelech felt very good about the fact that he was supported by the Mitzrayim, 
by the Egyptians, even though Yermio was warning him away from this. Um, he was being supported by the Egyptians, and I called the Seder, and uh, we'll, we'll live. So um, this Yoyakim heard about this Yermiyahu who's disturbing the peace. So it says in Tanakh. And he said, what's he doing? So they said he wrote a Megillus together with his cipher, Baruch ben Nerya. He, he wrote a, a Megillus Eicha, a Megillah, and he's reading this Megillah all over the place, and he's like a prophet, not like a prophet, he is a prophet, and people are listening to him, and he's ruining the peace. He's ruining the shtel here of Eretz Yisrael, where all of a sudden he's telling, shaking people up. Here we're living comfortably, and we're paying taxes to the Egyptians, but, you know, everything's okay. We're at peace. It's a long time to be at peace, 22 years. Like, I mean, here, if there's not a missile from Gaza in a year, we're like, wow, it's all over. You know, so it's a long time to be in peace, 22 years. Um, so we were in peace. So we said, I want to hear what that Megillah has to say. Well, I want to hear the Megillah. Bring me a, somebody who could read the Megillah. If he would have brought you, if Yermio himself would have gone to the Melech Yoyakim, he would have killed him on the spot. If Baruch ben Neria would have gone to the um, Melech, he would have killed him on the spot too. They had to hide, it says here in Tanakh, from the Melech. Yermio, our Navi. Um, so instead they sent in what he calls here a Yehudi. They sent in some Jew. And they went. They went into the base of Melech, and he says, what does it say here? So, by he, Kikra Yehudi, it says over here, Pasuk Chavav, I'm sorry, let me just start a little bit earlier. He sent out a Yidla to go get the Megillah. And he went in front of the king. We have to imagine the situation. He went in front of the king and he started to read the Megillah, which Eicha wrote. And the, the king was in his winter palace. And the fireplace was burning, like a very pastoral kind of, um, kind of a situation. Like here, there, he's in his beautiful palace with the fire burning, comfortable. When he got to the fourth Pasuk, so um Yikra'el Batar Hasaifer, so the Gemara in Maid Khat and Chavav explains this. It says, Amr Layla Hayakim. Um the reader said to the Yayakim, Kosav Yirmiya Saifa Kinos. You know, the prophet Yirmiya, who you don't like, he wrote a Kinos. Amr Lo Maxibe. So Gemara Mad Khan, I'm reading from my Khan. So he says, Echa Yashva Badad. How, Ermio asked the question, Echa Yashva Badad. What's going to happen if the Jewish people become isolated from all nations of the world? Echa Yashva Badad. It's a startling pasuk. Isolated, we're doing well. So says the Gemara, the Yoyakim said, Anna Malka. Nobody's isolating me. I'm the king here. Anna Malka. So he read further. It's going to be crying all over Israel. It's going to be Avelus all over Israel. Amr Bachai Tifke, Pasuk base. You know, Joachim listened to the Pasuk and he said, Malka Anna. It's not going to affect me. I'm the king. I'm in control. Malkanda. Darchetsiyoin Avelos. Whole Eretz Yisrael is going to be mourning. Malkanda. I'm the Malach. Nothing's going to happen. Then he got to Pasuk Hey. Hayut Sareha Laraish. The enemies are going to become the kings and prime ministers in this country. What? You're putting me out of a job? 
Miyad kora kol ha'askare sheba usrafan. That's such an interesting thing that he did. He took a razor out of his drawer, the king. He cut out every place where it says Hashem in the Megillah. And then he took them and he threw them into the fireplace that was burning. This story happened, as I say, 22 years before the Harbin. The Eicha book was already written. The Megillah was already written. It was already ripped up with a, with a razor blade and thrown into the fireplace because there was a total lack of acceptance, total state of denial by the local government that anything could ever happen in this country. Ano Malka. Nobody's touching me. Nobody's moving me. Ano Malka. Now, thank God, Yermio made an extra copy. Not only had it made an extra copy, but the Gemara says... Baruch Benaria wrote a copy. He brought it to the king. I guess he prophesied that he wasn't going to like this. Um, and he also added, Parik, he wrote Parak Aleph, Parak Beis. And then, according to Chazal, he added Parak Gimel and Parak Dalad of Eicha. That was between the story here of Yoachim, Melech Yisrael, and the Chorban. And then Parak Hay, I'm not sure, 100% sure, but Zachar Hashem, that's a tefillah, Zachar Hashem, Ha'ayolano. Also by written by Yermio, but this was apparently written in the last stage of it. So, what the 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 important part of the story is that here you have Yermio continuing with his Megillus Eicha throughout Eretz Yisrael for twenty two years. The king Yoyakim, after he accepted Egyptian rule was completely in denial of this, ended up with the Gullus. Yermio kept on his thing. Yermio was arrested. There was a, there was, they, were, they wanted to put a um, death penalty on him and on Baruch Benaria, capital punishment for treason, for doing such a thing as, as um, disenchanting the entire Malchut Israel. Like, how could you even suggest that there's going to be a problem here? On the Malka. So you see here, I just want to say this one message before we go on to the next uh, stage of Jewish history here and, and the Kinois. Um, you see this message of, again, a type of Avodah Zarah. The Avodah Zarah can come in two forms. It can come in forms of a little getchkala that's behind your delas, at the time Yoshio, or it could come into the form of I'm, I'm set. I to say there. And he would say there, I'm in my palace, the fireplace is going, I've got a little army here, I can, I've got a jail, I've got police, I've got all kinds of things, nobody's bothering me. In a minute, the Egyptians knocked him down, and then the Babylonians destroyed the Egyptians, and we were in the Harbin base of Mikdash. And Yermio was right, oh, Yermio, we should have listened to Yermio on Navi, that was our Navi. That's why I say Yermio was the Navi, not just of the Harbin, Yermio was the Navi of all times. And it actually ended the, the, with, with the, with the Golos of Bavel, finally this, this uh, fixation, this obsession with Havad Zarah ended with the Anshei Knesset HaGdolo. They were mispalo for this, that, uh, this fixation. But this was the end of a tzkufa, which went from the Egel Azov to the Chorben Beis HaMikdosh. Havad Zarah, Havad Zarah, Havad Zarah, augmented by Anna Malka, the Koichi Vaitzim Yadi, that we feel we're okay. It's the same thing as the, as the people said to Yeremio when he told them about Avodazar. Listen, we're not giving up Avodazar. We're okay. This was all throughout the, the, the from, from everywhere, everywhere from the time, even before the Eagle, through Pesel Micha, through everything. We had to let go of this obsession. We have to make sure today we're, we're letting go of this obsession. And, just, and that's the chat, Mimara Megila Kasavane. Now, we're running out of time, which is good. But um, Tet Zion brings us from the Bayus Rishon to the Bayus Sheni. Very important for me that we all understand the, the um, very brief uh, snapshot of the history that was going on. Much as I explained it, the much more I feel like I have to explain it more. 
just for reference, um, in Jewish years, the Bayis Rishon was destroyed in Shlach, right? 338. Four, uh, 3338, right? Bayis we're talking about now, let's go back to the Tagoyish years, um, Gregorian years, 70 AD. Like now is 2022, 70. For reference, which is important, according to um, the, Jew- the, the non-Jewish calendar, um, the founder of Christianity was year zero. So, so just gives you an idea. Christianity, Romans, Chorim Beis Amikdash, 70 years after. I don't see everyone has a timeline but me. Um, You know, the base of Mikdash, the Bayi Sheni, of course, was started being built by Ezra um, 70 years after the Corbin of the Bayi Srishoin. Purim story happened in the middle. It's important that we get a historical perspective over here. Um, it was the time of the Persians, and then the Persian rule allowed us to build the Bayi Sheni. We built the Bayi Sheni. Um, then we built, then the Yavanim took over from the Persians, Yavanim Nik Pitsualai, Yavanim came, the Greeks, Greeks were like something like I spoke about in Mitzrayim and something like I spoke about um, in, in, in Chutz Arts today and something like happened in the Gerush Svarad. Um, I think a great amount of Jews became Misyavnim and we just lost them. Don't think that they ever came back. But there were those that fought the Greeks and those were we, those were Sadikim, the Hashmanoyim, Hashmanoyim came along, just taking a quick ride through the Bayesheni, and they fought for, they got fed up with the Yavanim, and they got fed up with the, uh, the Persians before them, and all the different uh, foreign governments, and the taxes, and the, and the Avodazaras, and they said, Mila Hashem Eli, the Hashmanoyim said, Mila Hashem Eli, like, that's what we say, Al Nisim, Vala Purkan, Vala Gvaris, on Hanukkah, that's the Hanukkah story, and we took over Eretz Yisrael. It was like a miracle, right? Rabin Biyad Matim. We took over Eretz Yisrael. We had a country here in Eretz Yisrael. Um, just like an amazing thing. The, 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 that turned into, it started with a group of Kanoim, <laughs> which were Mila um, like Pinchas. You know, they were Kohanim. Kohanim can get a little bit, you know, ufgericht. Because Pinchas, Mila um, become Kanoim. And then they created a government which was connected to Astaira, really. The Ramban says that Kayhanim should not be creating governments. Um, and that government, uh, but, uh, but the Hashmanoim, because of this Hanukkah story, the Beis Amikdash lasted another 200 years. Um, and then the Romans were taking over the world, did not like that the Hashmanoim were, had their little country in charge of Eretz Yisrael. So they did battle with the Hashmanoim. So the Hanukkah story, I have this date in front of me, was 165 BCE, or think about 3597, or whatever you prefer. It's difficult because the uh, years go backwards over there. <laughs> right? The Hashmanoim, Shimon, Yochanan, Horkinus, 36 to 1 to 37, 25. And we're already holding in minus 36. And the Romans, headed by Pompey, who was the one of the Roman um, one of the Roman emperors or close to the emperor, conquers Yerushalayim in the year 63 BCE. So just do your math for a minute. So we're talking about 60 years before zero, and then 70 AD was the Chorban. So we're talking about what? 130 years. So there was 130 years of Roman rule in Yerushalayim. What does it mean, Roman rule? It wasn't necessarily such a bad thing. It was like the Egyptians were ruling Eretz Yisrael. Or I don't know what's going on now. Baruch Hashem, we're independent, right? But, um, but foreign, foreign entities um, were ruling. Rome wanted to rule the whole country. 
So for all these years, um, 130 years, um, we took over from the Chashmonaim and we sent Hordus, the Romans sent Hordus into Yerushalayim and into Eretz Yisrael. This, this wonderful book here, um, Temple of Flames, I mention it every year. So really, um, what, it, what he did was, in large part, was um, rewrote Josephus in a language which is easier to understand. And Josephus, uh, we don't know. We don't know if it's one hundred percent correct, or it's fifty percent correct, or eighty percent correct. There's certain stussim in there. He was a gay of a but basically, that's our our main history, and most of it has been proven to be correct. But there is no other history interesting of the Chorban Beis Hamikdash. Get a little bit here, a little bit there. Hardly any history of the whole Chorban Beis Hamikdash. But he quotes here Josephus War, the book War, six, page three twenty nine. Pompey, who was the one who first took away from the Hashmonaim, and he said to the Jews, you, are from, you who from the first ever since Pompey, I'm sorry, not Pompey said it, but uh, Hurtus Hurt said it, Pompey reduced you by force. Ever since you Israelis were reduced by force, you never ceased from revolution, have now ended by declaring open war upon the Romans. So what happened here was that there was, the Romans were getting out of hand, um, more taxes, more secularism, um, less Jewish, the country is becoming less Jewish. Chashmonoim, um, Kol Zoymer, Mibes Chashmonoya, no, we don't believe him. He killed out the Chashmonoim, Hurdus killed out the Chashmonoim. And all the Herodian temples and things that you see here um, come from this um, time. There's a whole list of um, governors, and but I just want to get to the point. The point was that um, Hordus killed out the base Hashemunai, he was threatened by them, and created a very solid rule in here in Eretz Yisrael. There was rebellion after rebellion, and the Romans hated rebellion. The title of the, of the chapter in, um, in Josephus is Rebellion in Judea. <laughs> There's rebellion in Judea. They hated rebellion because, you know, they're trying to keep everything calm. They were trying to placate, they were trying to satisfy the Jewish community here in Eretz Yisrael by taking it easy, hands off, hands off, and you know, you pay your taxes and we'll build it up. The most famous such event we all know was Hordus. Hordus um, said, after he killed so many, many thousands of Jews from the base, including Talmidei Chacham, it, it was a real Russia. Um, so the Gemara tells a story that he met with Baba Ben Buta, who he almost killed him too. He blinded him, and he said to Ben Baba Ben Buta, he tested him to see whether the Jews are loyal to him, to the Romans or not. Baba Ben Buta was a very, very smart man. Ruach Hakadosh didn't even know who he was talking to. He didn't know he was talking to Hurtus because he was blind. But he, but Hurtus was testing his loyalty, and he and he and he showed loyalty to the Roman people. And Hurdus realized that he doesn't have to fight anymore with the Jews. We just have to keep them at bay, just do what we have to do. And he said to Baba Mbuta, now that I killed all the Jews, how do I get them to like me again? Oh, that's not hard. <laughs> um, you can dedicate a building. <laughs> you, you, um, Atta, you were Machaba the Ayur He said, you put out the order that you killed all these Talmud Chachamim. The base of Mikdash in Yerushalayim is dilapidated from all these wars and neglect of over all the years. You're the biggest builder and architect in the, in, in, in the world, possibly in history, by the way. Hordus, Binyane Hordus is just unbelievable. Everyone still can't get over out of Yom the, 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 the mosaic of floors and the and unbelievable drainage systems that he, that he knew and the beauty and the grandeur of Yerushalayim. So Hurdus says, I'm going to build you a, a, a he told Hurdus, build them a base of Mikdash. We do, do a puts in the base of Mikdash. This wasn't just the Sheputs. This was, Hurdus stood up, he spoke to all of the people in Eretz Yisrael, as much as he could speak to from the Harabais. He stood up on the wall and he said, um, Rabbi Sai, I want to make Eretz Yisrael a place for you. I want it to be a place where you're comfortable, where you can make korbanos, where you can, where you can be at peace. I'm going to build you, I'd like to build you a building. The, the, the Klai Yisrael was then, as you know, divided into so many different groups as it is today. Um, 
there are those that say, hey, let's go with Hortus. <laughs> He's taking care of us, like they have a government here. There are those that were absolutely anti hordus What are you coming in here? We don't want any Romans here. This is Eretz Yisrael. There were those that were realists, and they realized, yeah, but how are we supposed to run a country and fight with the Romans? How's that supposed to happen? Like the Romans is the strongest army in the world. Chashmanoim are all dead. So now, what are we supposed to do now with the, with the, with the Romans? There were those that were Kanoim Ludvar Hashem. There were those that were pacifists. There were those that were, um, as, as, as Chazal already said, there were Tzedukim, there were Prushim. There were Asayonim. Uh, we're Prussian. <laughs> Prussian. Haredim. We're Haredim. So Haredim are Prussian. Haredim Ludvar Hashem. Go with Gedolim. Gedolim at that time ended up being, uh, you know, Hillel, Shammai, Rav Shimon ben Gamliel, Rav Gamliel, the whole Gamliel family, Rav Yochanan ben Zakkai. Um, these are the Gedolim. The Gedolim Adar of the time. Prussian. They were all Prussian. They all belonged to the family of Prussian. And that's, that's where we went. But it wasn't at all Kula uh, Almaloi Pligi. At this time, there were those that were um, within the, the Haredi movement um, more violent. Sakrikim, it's all evolved over these years of the Romans. Um, Sakrikim is a type of a knife. They would, they would go, anybody who was a traitor, they'd keep it in their pocket, they would strap, stab them. Kill them. There's murders like that mingle with the crowd. So people finding dead all over 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 your slime, even by by Oilo Rigolum, they were killing people. There was the Asayonim, which are probably turned into or morphed into the early Christians. Um, they were an ascetic group. It was a, it was a different type of a thing. Uh, they just didn't they didn't want to have anything to do with Romans or Jews, for that matter. They they're probably the ones that ran to the Qumran and the Dead Sea and Masada and these places, uh, you know, or the early I don't know what they were, but um, <laughs> we went early, early years. We went to, um, you know, the yeshiva took a tour. This was early years, like 1970, so like maybe 69. So uh, Rav Scheinberg came on the tour. We went to Masada. Yeah. So I went to Masada with Rav Scheinberg. <laughs> um, Talos, Tefillin, the whole thing. And um, somebody asked him who were, you know, it was a tour guide. It was telling him, Gershon Kaufman. You know, it was telling us the whole, um, all of a sudden, telling us the story of Masada. Everyone knows the story of Masada. So, um, so somebody asked Rav Scheinberg, like, who were these people? Tefillin, you know, they were chopping him. They found Tefillin. Were they Rashi Tefillin? Were they Tom Tefillin? You know, you know, he was like, they were both. What? <laughs> but yeah, like, they were Rashi, Rabbi Tom. Like, but let me ask, who were these people? So I just remember the words out of here. It was a JDL. <laughs> well, that's a good word, though. <laughs> What's JDL? Oh my gosh! <laughs> JDL was the organization founded by Mayor Kahana, but um, all of a Sholem and and huh? Jewish Defense League, which was I was at one time a proud member of, by the way. So you know what. No, but it's, it's interesting to understand how history repeats itself, repeats itself. But um, I, remember, I remember I was in Crown Heights at the time. I was a kid. I was like 13. So I was in, I was in Crown Heights the time of the uh, same time Americana was in um, Crown Heights. Hmm? 69, 68? Yeah. What? I'm right. Okay, well, we'll reminisce later. But I just want to tell you, I just want to tell you the story. So um, they, they put out a call, Lubavitchers in Crown Heights. It wasn't only Lubavitchers, it was Lubavitchers. I was, a, I was a member of a youth group, and, and the youth group was headed by America Hanna, JGL. That was the youth group of Crown Heights. So um, they put out a call. There was, there was um, crime in Crown Heights. What does it mean, crime, crime in Crown Heights? Blacks were mugging Jews, and particularly on Shabbos, be, um, was a problem because Jews didn't have any money on Shabbos, and they would, um, if you didn't produce money, so so you can get beat up for not having money in your in your pocket. So the Rav of Crown Heights, his name was Rav Dworkin, I remember, Choshev a big Chacham. So he paskin that every person, every Lubavitcher walking in Crown Heights should carry a couple of dollars in their pocket on Shabbos, and that way, if somebody comes and mugs you, you give them the dollar. And they go away. 
I don't, you can agree or disagree. I'm just saying that was a story. That was absurd. We came to the youth group at that time. I'm sure this wasn't the only one. It was like all over the place. And Rabbi Meir Kahana, who was a mirror, by the way, he learned to mirror, and uh, came to help the kids. And uh, he was so upset about this. You're carrying dollars in your pocket on Shabbos? Switchblades. <laughs> Mace. Nunchucks. I don't know how you put that in your pocket. <laughs> Hey, karate lessons, judo. So I was never very good at these things. <laughs> As they say, I know judo, karate, and one other Japanese word. <laughs> That's the, don't know any of it, but that was like the thing that was going on at that time, that people were learning how to defend themselves. You don't give in to them. So like, it's interesting like how history repeats itself. But here back, let's go back to the Beis Hamikdash. That's my mission such, you know, like um, had all different types of groups. And it's interesting for me, most interesting for me, what was the Das of Chazal? That's really the only thing that I really want to speak about in the next few minutes, because what was the Das of the Chachomim? But some were against Hurdus, um, some negotiated with Hurdus. The Chachomim, it seems, the Chachomim at the time said, look, the Gula is not here yet, we're still in Gullus. If Hurdus is willing to, the fact is we're under Roman rule, that's a fact, and if we're under Roman rule, let's be good with the Romans and let them take care of us. Let's be Eulerego, we could still bring Karbanas. They worked out the halachas very, very well. Um, they, these were Tanoim, so they, they understood what we're talking about. These are Arabeim. And um, let's, let's just make sure that it's, it's for real. So they, they actually had a meeting with Hordus. Um, this is all recorded in Josephus. They had a meeting with Hordus, and, and they negotiated with him that, first of all, he's not going to build anything which is connected to her. It's going to be 100% correct. He, he expanded very much, like Shlomo Melech, expanded very much on what the, what the Mishkan was, that's for sure. Um, and they also made up with him a very interesting thing, that don't knock down the old base of Mikdash until you build the new one. So there was a whole hop here of how to build the base of Mikdash. It's like you don't throw away the dirty water until you get the clean ones. We're not going to be without a base of Mikdash. And by the way, if you look here at, um, let's say, uh, in Baba Vasar, Davches, Rabbi Chano Wasserman, and Koivit Shiurim, I'll hold all kinds of Pilpulim and Divrei Torah Lamdas as to um, whether, how much of an old shul you're allowed to knock down before you build a new one. This is all a limud from, from Binyan Hurdus. Anyways, Binyan Hurdus built a base of Mikdash not to be believed. The Beis Hamikdash um, that Hordus built was was, and the people um, he gave the speech. The people decided to go along with it. He expanded the Beis Hamikdash to such a point where the Gemara says, "Mishalei Ra Binyan Hordus Lei Ra Binyan Yafa Miyam of Mishalei Ra Yishalayim B'Tifarta," referring to this period, "Lei Ra Yir Yafa Miyam of Yishalayim." Um, was the most beautiful building in the world. It described it a little bit. He has a description over here of what the Beis Hamikdash looked like according to Josephus. Just uh, like it. I just want to read you a little bit easier than saying it in my words. Yerushalayim reached the height of its grandeur towards the end of the Second Temple period. This is the period we're talking about. It was one of the largest and most beautiful cities in the world. What began as a small temple city in the time of Ezra and Nehemiah grew into a sprawling metropolis covering an area of some 450 acres, twice the size of the present-day old city. That was Yerushalayim. It boasted powerful walls, magnificent palaces, prestigious neighborhoods, as fine as any in the cities of the Roman Empire. This is the period in which the Gemara says, he who has not seen Jerusalem in its glory has not seen a beautiful city in his lifetime. Sukkah, Nanalif and Beis. Most illustrious city in the east, the Goyim said. But what made Yerushalayim stand out from the capitals of the world was the shrine at its heart. It's the word of Josephus. The Beis Hamikdash towered over its surroundings to more than twice the height of the present day Dome of the Rock. So you look at the Dome of the Rock, it's pretty high. Twice that size. In Etzem, if you look at it, it was 50 meters. The value of just was 50 meters. So somebody tell me how tall is this building? This is the ceiling, 10 meters. You're talking about five times, this is three floors. You're talking about two and a half floors. So you're talking about five times, 10 times rather, almost 10 times it comes out to be, almost 10 times this, this building. You're talking about a skyscraper in Yerushalayim at a time when they didn't know how to make it. It was the base of Mikdash. It was covered with shiny marble and gold. 
When, the, when people in Yerushalayim woke up in the morning, the citizens of Yerushalayim marveled at the edifice considered by many to be the most magnificent temple in the world. Who has not seen the temple built up, has not seen a magnificent building in his life? Sukkah, Nanala from the base. Josephus talks about how when you looked, when you walked to the base of Migdush, I'll be Makatsir, when you walked up to the base of Migdush from the old said the Oile Regolim, tens of thousands, time during the Roman time, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people came. You know, there's a um, there's this like road you walk up to the from Sharash Basis. There's a like a road you walk up, no big, no big deal. It's maybe a little shorter, a little thinner than this room. Um, it used to be what you see now, they've discovered archaeologists, was, was six or seven times the size of what it is now. Had it going this way, going that way, kiosks on the way, mikvahs on the way that they found. People went to be oil regal as they were walking up towards the base of Mikdash. The way it was designed, all they would see was the gold and the, the marble reflecting the sun as it hit it. It was designed... Leave it to her just. It was designed in a way that all you can see when you're walking up to the base of Mikdash was a tower of light. It looked like a tower of light. Sun was shining on gold and marble. This was the brilliant design that existed over there. There were corridors. There were hallways. There was, there was a special um, uh, um, crowns on top all across the base of Mikdash to keep the, the ravens and the pigeons away made out of gold. There was a special place to blow the shoifer in the southwest side. There was the, what we call now the southern excavation, which was a beautiful place where the levium would sit. I don't know if there was levium in the Bayashani, but the, the levium or the singers would stand and, the, and, they would, and they would sing Nagunim as people would come up. Everyone who would come to Yerushalayim from all over Eretz Yisrael and even from all over the world would just come to this and it was, the most, it was the most magnificent thing in the world. And there, and I want to emphasize this a thousand times, that was the base Hashem. That was the bias where in this place there's no Avodah Zorah. In this place, we're only davening to Hashem and we're only saying Shema Yisrael Hashem Aleikeinu Hashem Echad. But Zek Keilivan Veyu what this looked like, its height, its grandeur, its, its gold, its, its, it, it, the, this, the singing, the music, the instruments. And this was just 30, 30 years before the Chorban Beis Hamikdash. The Kanoim did not like this, and they were right to a certain extent. They liked the Beis Hamikdash. But first of all, there was corruption going on. Time of Abayi Sheni, Kohanim would pay off the Romans and become Kohan God. That was what was going on in time of Abayi Sheni. Time of Abayi Sheni, during this era, the Romans couldn't resist putting their um, flags. They didn't have a flag. I mean, they might have had a flag, but I don't know. But they, they had, there was the Roman eagle, like the American eagle. You know, there was a Roman eagle made out of gold, and this is what they put in their neighborhoods. Like that was a sign that you're in Rome now. You're, this is a Roman thing. It was very beautiful, probably, like a widespread eagle. And they put them on many of the shoram of Yerushalayim. They put them. It, it was irritating to people. The taxes were irritating to people. And the chutzpah of the Romans walking all around, and they, were, they were just not mechubad. They were not mechabed as the base of Mikdash. Um, now, that's interesting. I, I, I think I'm right about this, that throughout the whole thing, the Chachomim, our Chachomim, the Prushim, they said, listen, you know, Mashiach's not here yet. And, like, if this is what we have to deal with, this is what we have to deal with. And, like, Lazigemach, the Romans, and, you know, let's, we're, we're, doing, we're doing okay here. They're taking care of us. Don't make a rebellion. And there were those that wanted to make a rebellion, and there were those that became Goyim. There was all kinds. But the Das Chazal was with the Binyan Hordes. In 68, to make a long story short, in 68, the year 68, that's when what's called in history the Great Revolt began. And the Great Revolt was the Kanoim that decided that we're going to rebel against the Romans. The Romans went too far, they felt, too much sacrilege, too much secularity here in the space of Mingdash, and we're going to rebel. And the, the stories in Josephus are magnificent about 
the stories of Yosef are magnificent about the heroism of the Jewish people. Well, it's like the Chashmonaim. Like they, 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 they went with hardly any ammunition. Um, like, the, like we know the stories of Masada. That was the base of Mikdash when the Romans were coming. The Roman army. And they kept on sending more legions and more legions and more legions. And we threw hot oil on them. And we, we, we went with Monsieur Snavish. We mingled and put on Roman clothing, mingled in their crowds and started stabbing everybody. We held off the Korban base of Mikdash for two years, which is amazing. Thinking that we would make another... I think, thinking we're going to make another Malchus Chashmanon. Get rid of the Romans. It's unrealistic, big to think you're going to overthrow the Roman Empire. I, I just say this, like, I'm wondering, like, you think that the Chazan, the Tanoim that are in Arshas, do you think they were fighting in this rebellion? Do you think they were part of the, you think they were there throwing oil on their, I don't know. It's not in the Gemara. Well, not in the Gemara. What we do know in the Gemara is that Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai in the year 68, which is the time of the Great Rebellion, um, went to visit the Roman governor, Vespasian. Um, he had to sneak out because the Kanoim were going to kill him. He sneaked out to visit Vespasian. Sneaked out means sneaked out of Yerushalayim to Caesarea, I believe. And to sneak out, Kilui was dead. And the Gemara tells us, this the Gemara already tells us, that he went to Vespasian. Vespasian was kind of like happy to see him. He says, They talked. Vespasian was a, a smart man. Rebbecha Menzakai was the, the Goin Hadar. Rebbecha Menzakai was a leader of, leader of leaders amongst the Jewish people. He was, he was one from the Prusha. He's our Chazal, our Maser. Um, they talked philosophy, they talked this, they, they, and, and uh, Vespasian liked him. He liked Rabbi Yochanan ben Zaka, and he said, what do you ask, what do you want? Tell me what you want, I'll, I'll help you out. Listen, we're not going to give up Roman rule. <laughs> the Romans rule um, Yerushalayim, that's it. The Romans rule the base of Mikdash. I'll tell you what, the Romans, said Vespasian, built Yerushalayim. <laughs> that temple, that's our temple, we built it. It's a hard pill to swallow. That's a hard pill to swallow. You know, the, the Sfarnai says in the beginning of Parshish Pekudai, take a look at the first Sfarnai, second Sfarnai in Parshish Pekudai, where he says that the Saif Kol Saif, the base of Mikdash, was Nachra because it was built by Hordus and the Romans. It was Goisha money. It wasn't built by Kedush Vitar. Chazal knew that. But Chazal said, it's a base of Mikdash. Till Mashiach comes, we're there. They're taking care of us. They're paying the electric bills. Like, let's, let's do this. So he snuck out and listened to what he said. To Vespasian, he said, "Okay, um, I'll ask you for this." The Chachomim, the lived on the southern side of the old city. There, you know, you can see their houses. Like, we want to go out of here. There's a revolt going here. Listen to what he said. There's a revolt. This is 68 A.D. There is a revolt. Send us to Ashdod. Let the Chachomim have free pass to Ashdod to Karen Biyavne, <laughs> and there in Yavne. We will make our own Torah and our own yeshivas and our own Sanhedrin, and that's where we'll be in Yavna. Tain Yavna v'chachomel. This was like the most drastic land for peace arrangement in the history of the state of Israel because Tain Yavna v'chachomel says, okay, you can take Yerushalayim. Listen to what he said. Take Haifa, take Tel Aviv. Just Tain Yavna v'chachomel. Oh, also in the Yavna, Tachzor um, shall shelter the Gamliosa. Like the, the, the Romans didn't want the, the Hillo family, Rabbi Gamil was an echad of Hillo, they didn't want the Hillo family to be um, the Nasim of Israel that were threatened by them. They were too powerful. So he said, listen, send us to Yavna and let Rabbi Gamil be the Nasi. The Jews are Rabbi Yechon, but Zechadakai was the Nasi. He said, I don't want to be the Nasi. Let him be the Nasi. And, um, and can you get some medicine, a doctor, to, to um, Rabbi Tzadik? Okay, we'll leave that aside for a second. Vespasian. Um, agreed with these Tznoyim. And Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai and Rabbi Lazar ben Aracha, Yemacham or Acharov, Gemara says in Chulun, um, they went to, to, to Yavne, and they, were, they weren't the ones fighting. I'm just saying, I'm not, uh, they weren't the ones fighting uh, for the base of Mikdash in 69 and 70. It was, that was a different group of people, which were, might have been very holy people, but it wasn't the Das Chazal to fight with the Romans. 
important nakuda. The rebellion wasn't stopped, and this is where Akina Tezayin, which I want to say before we um, have to start winding down. Akina Tezayin, Zachor HaShir Asatzar. One of the things that Rabbi Yechem ben Zakkai did is he, is he said in Nevoa, he said a prophecy that you, Vespasian, you're just a small, he wasn't, by the way, like a miyuchas, he didn't come from emperors. As Josephus says, he was like a, he, he came from like, you know, it was like we see in Megillus Esther, he was like from like Nebuchadnezzar, it's from the horse stables. But he told them, but he was a very smart and accomplished man, he was a great military man. Rabbi Yochum and Zakkai told them that you're going to become the emperor of, of Rome. You'll see, you'll see, you'll become the emperor of Rome. He was a Bapitobi, the emperor of Rome, why should I become the emperor of Rome? Anyways, he got a message just then that he's the emperor of Rome. And his son Titus, this was a, was a wonderful that his nevuah came true, but Vespasian put his son Titus, who was a, a, a much worse tyrant, a terrorist, um, he made him take over. What was he taking over? Let's just understand clearly. Squash the rebellion that's taking place in Yerushalayim. That is your job. Vespasian didn't do it well. Pompeo didn't do it well. None of them did it well. Nero, Nero and Caesar died. Nero... Was, was the grandfather of Rabbi Meir, you know, like how, how this all works, the Ashkacha process. He died, Vespasian took over. All of a sudden, Titus, our Russia, the butcher, Titus, um, I'll do this my way. And whoever could take over Yerushalayim, which was so fortified with so many big walls and unpenetrable walls that with the equipment they have, even with the, with the uh, battering rams and the big gigantic slingshots that they might have had, um, all those things that the Romans had that Josephus described, they couldn't, it was hard for them to get through the walls of Yerushalayim, but Titus said, I'm going to get through. And on Shivas or Batamuz, he broke through the walls of Yerushalayim, and then he approached the walls of the base of Mikdash, and on the, there was the battle of the 7th of, and there's the battle of the 8th of Av, and the battle of 9th of Av. And on Tisha B'av, he breached the walls of the Beis HaMikdash. Nobody could believe that actually the Beis HaMikdash was penetrated by Titus HaRosha. And he went in to the Kodesh HaKodshim. Now, there was no Aaron in the Bayesheni, no Kruvim in the Bayesheni. It was an empty room, but it, everybody knew that that's a piece of hush, that's a piece of Elam Haba in that room. And the first thing he did when he went into the Kodesh, Titus, and this is for Tisha B'av to remember. First thing he did, Zachar Asher Asad Sar Befinim. What happened when Titus came into the base of Migdash? Shalaf Charboy Uba Lifnai Vilifnim. He took out his sword. He was surrounded by security and officers and Romans and blood. He took out his sword. He was metame de lechem upon him. I'm not sure what the source is for that in the Gemara. Somebody know? He was metame de lechem upon him. But this does say the Gemara in Gittin. Vigider paroiches balashte upon him. And he stabbed the parochus. The parochus was there, and the parochus was woven one way on one side and art on the other side. And he wove it. The Gemara says, that the Gemara tells us the story. Motion of the Gemara, Zutitas HaRosha, Shechira, Vigitev, Klapim, Mala. It's in Gittin and Vav. Chipe, Zoyna, Tafa, Zoyna, Biyadai. He took his girlfriend, who Josephus says his name, her name was Bernice, who the Entas say was Josephus' sister. <laughs> I guess I'm Yenta, I know that. But, um, which, which helps you understand like, why some of the... Tafa zayna biyadai v'nichnas l'beis kodshe ha-kodoshim b'yitziya sefer Torah v'over alav alav ha-avera He... he um, had intimacy with this woman on the um, a Sefer Torah in the Kodesh HaKadosh. He took his knife and he stabbed the Parochus. And the Parochus started to bleed. This is not in biblical times. 
Anybody understand this miracle that the Gemara is describing? The Peruch has started to bleed. Uka Savar and Titus concluded at this point, Kasavar Hareges Atzmai. See, the Gemara can't say the words, but I'll say, he thought I killed God. Bleeding, the Peruch is bleeding. Who could understand this? He believed in God? That he killed him? He believed God, he could make him bleed? Like, what was he? Was he a, was he a monotheist? And Ovid um, Avarazara? What was this man? He was a Shliach Hashem. Ma Asal, not Asal Parechas, he took these bleeding Parechas, also came in Gargutani, like a basket, Vehevi Kola Kalem Shuba Mikdash, he took out 39 Kalem from the base of Mikdash. And he took him on a boat to go to Rome. That's the Arch of Titus. The parade of Tyrus was, Titus was all about this. And the Arch of Titus was all about this. And he got away with murder, which the Kina says here, that how could it be that went into the Kodesh HaKochim, or near there, I don't even know what they did, and they got eaten by fire, and he Titus was there, Zoyna Tsoya, Hichnis Vloy Nichva Boesh, we can design, and on and on. So bear with me, there's no place to go. I just want to um, tell you the most, the, pshat, the most famous Gemara about the Chorba. The Gemara says, Amar Rabbi Yechonon, Gittin Vav. Rabbi Yechonon was long after this all happened. Rabbi Yechonon was sitting in Eretz Yisrael, Rabbi Yechonon and Rishlakish, at that period. Am I right? Amar Rabbi Yechonon. Yishvil, Kamsa bar Kamsa Chorva Yerushalayim. Shalan Vasanusa Yishalav, Zechariah ben Avkilos, Chorva Yerushalayim. Where it says... Here's a reflection. Ma, what, this is the story of Kamsa Bar Kamsa, Zechariah ben Avkilos. You all know the story, so I'm just going to tell it to you, Bekitzer, according to Haber. Um, the story was, we all know that somebody made a party. There was Gedolim at the party. Chachmei Eretz Yisrael were at the party. Chachamim. There were rich people at the party. We made a party told the Shamash to go visit Kamsa, to go invite Kamsa, not to invite Bar Kamsa. We all know he invited Bar Kamsa by accident. Bar Kamsa got angry. He was told to leave. He got angry, and he created a situation where the Great Rebellion or the Great Revolt started. Because look what happened. This is Rabbi Yechonon so many decades later um, reflecting on, if you look at really what happened, what happened was that um, this, this Bar Kamsa was apparently a Russia. I don't know who made the party, and I don't know who Kamsa was. I also don't know why the Gemara says, you should Kamsa, Bar Kamsa, Harvey Shalom. What did Kamsa do wrong? But we know who Bar Kamsa was. What did he do? He had a Kesher with the Romans, and he went to the Romans, and he said to the Romans, and this is the, the real story, because, because other Chazal fill in from, from the Gemara and Gittin. He went to the Romans, and he said, Mardu that the Gemara says. There's a mered that's going to happen amongst the Jews. Do you understand the significance of this? The Romans thought they had everything in control. The Jews were, okay, there was no revolt yet. There was no 68 AD yet. They thought, we've got it all under control. The Jews are in their place. They're actually pretty happy with the Binyan Hordus. Everything is Beseir. Um, so this guy comes along, he wants to be a kochlefel, and create problems. So he says, there's a merit of the Jews. How do I know that? Why would we think there's a merit with the Jews? Um, they, the, the Romans said, oh, just go try to send them a carbon. Now, they'll say that every day they brought a carbon for the Romans. Like, you know, it's like the, like the Pledge of Allegiance. The Tefillah L'Shoim Haromim. And time. They brought a carbon every day in the base. Make their shalom bias. There shouldn't be any problem with the Romans. This is what they knew to do. But they didn't send a specific carbon from the Roman emperor or from the Roman governor to the base of Mikdash. 
He said, let's try to go send them a carbon, see what they do. So he sent them a carbon. We all know the Gemara. Um, they found the plate to passle the carbon so that the Jews wouldn't bring the carbon. Hence, everything would domino back, and, and, the, and they would feel that there's, they would create a so-called rebel, a re- mered, which there wasn't really a mered at this point. The Romans would get angry, and there would be a war between the Romans and Jews. This was Bar Kamsa. This was not a story of Sinas Chinam alone. This was a story where Rabbi Yochanan reflected that it was this really it was really this moment, the Chang with the with the Regirung, <laughs> he 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 on with the with the local government of the Romans, and he they made a a Zechariah ben Avkilos, which was apparently a posik at the time. So um, they said, like, what should we do? We, we really, you know, if we don't bring this carbon, it's got, it has a mum in it. If we don't bring this carbon, the Romans are going to think that we're not bringing a carbon and we're rebelling. So he said, what am I going to do? Like, you can't, you can't bring a carbon which is not kosher. It has a mum by us. Something in the eye. They said, well, okay, well, maybe we should just kill the shaliach. It's always good to kill the messenger. So he says, that nah, we the people are going to say, you know, we're matzal mum and People are going to say that we're killing people for being matzal mum b'kachim. Like, so it was like a, um, you know, a people are going to say type of, type of guy, apparently. I mean, it was, I don't know, it was a great man. According to the Medrash Eicha, he was actually there at the Suda of Kamsa Bar Kamsa V'Leimicha. He was the one that wasn't, wasn't mocha on the, on the cover uh, of Bar Kamsa. Like, I don't want to start with, you know, this one's going to have tainas on me that I'm matzal mum b'kachim. This one's going to have tainas on me that I'm, like, you know, all kinds of, like, alumdish of things. You know, I'm going to match it. Rabbi Yechonah looked back at it. He says, you should have just brought the carbon. Because if you would have brought the carbon, or, alternatively, you could have killed this guy. But if you would have done that, you wouldn't be such an onov. <laughs> Interesting. Rashi says, savlanusoy. That'd be okay. Yeah. Then, then, there wouldn't have been the whole carbon base of Mikdash. That's what Rabbi Yechonah says. She'll kamsa bar kamsa. What does it mean? It wasn't, of course it was Sinas Chinam, but what, what, what's the Nakuda here? The Nakuda is essentially the revolt started with Kamsa Bar Kamsa and this, that we refused to bring the daily carbon for the Romans. They said there's a rebellion going on. Oh, rebellion in Judea. They hated that. So they came and they, they, they brought more artillery to, to Yerushalayim. If this made the rebels more angry, there was a two-year revolt and and Harva Beis Hamikdash and Titus came in and I want to repeat this again when Titus came into the Beis Hamikdash his his job was to squash the re- revolt and he he concluded the only way we can do this is by taking over the Beis Hamikdash Agav according to um, to to um, Josephus he didn't even want to destroy the Beis Hamikdash because he said the Beis Hamikdash like like Hordus built that look at that Sfarna. This is our basic big. I'm taking the Caleb to Rome. I, we made those Caleb. You know, every time I, 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 I hear in the news, uh, indulge me for a moment, you know, like the Jordanians are wanting, not letting us go up to the Harabayas. I don't go to the Harabayas. I'm just saying, like, like who are the Jordanians that tell me not to go to the Harabayas? I think, like, you know, uh, Rabbi Yosef told me I should go to the Harabayas. The Jordanians don't let people go to the Arabs don't let people go up to the Harabayas. The Americans don't let you go up to the Harabayas because Americans are just love a You know, they're, they're not like, like, and I always think to myself, like, what the heck? You know, who built the Harabayas? It's our Harabayas. <laughs> Who's telling us not to go up to the Harabayas? You know, those, those stones, those stones, you know how much they weigh? We slept from uh, Ramat Shlomo to... <laughs> To, to, to Yerushalayim, to build the base of Migdash, you're telling us not to go up to the Harabayas? It's our building. Somebody can tell me not to come into the shul? You know, you know what the real answer is? Mamash Koev Lagid. That Hordas built the base of Migdash. So, of course, we let Hordas build the base of Migdash. Hordas made those Kalim out of gold, and he made a base of Migdash that we're crying about till today. So I, I'm not, I'm just saying, Titus felt perfectly entitled to go into the base of Mikdash. So the only thing is, like, did it have Kedusha or didn't have Kedusha? No, there's Lamdanam here. Did it have Kedusha? Not only that, 
Kitchel is right to Kitchel also not right. The early Bavel gave it gave it Kedusha. So why did it have Kedusha? Uh, so the ter- the Territ says I don't know if they, they went because so Reb Chaim briskers it because it has Kedusha because we were Makadish the place and we were Makadish the Makam and we were Makadish the Kalim. So that has Kedusha. The Kedusha is not the Kedusha necessarily which comes from the Shemaim. That's the Kedusha Samakam. Nobody can take that away from the Evan HaShasiyah. The Kedusha Samakam, Kedusha of the Akeda, the Kedusha of Yaakov of Yenus Chalayim. Nobody can take that away. But, but the Kedusha of the Kalim is because we considered them to be Kedusha, as I think Reb Chaim says this, um, that, that we considered it to have Kedusha. So Mamela had Kedusha. But the point is from the Roman point of view, if that's important at all, I think it's important because it's the whole hashkafa of where we are, whether we're in Galos or whether we're in the Gula. So here's um, Rabbi Yechem and Zakai saying, I'm going to give everybody a headache more than the Tisha B'Av. Here Rabbi Yechem and Zakai saying, Okay, we're not going to fight with you about Yerushalayim. Here's Rabbi Yechem reflecting that Bishulcham Kamsa Bar Chamsa Chorva Yerushalayim, which means to say that there shouldn't have been any rebellion there altogether. You should have taken the way of Chazal. And, and, and just live with it until Mashiach comes. Harba Yerushalayim, basically the same thing. May I remind you that Yirmiyahu said to Yoyakim and to the Jews, and don't, don't fight with Bavel, and let the Mitzrayim come through if they want to come through. But the difference is, like, is there a Geula or is this a Galos? That's the whole that's the whole shackle of Atariya here, of Jewish history. So the Besamikdash was destroyed, the most beautiful thing we ever had destroyed. And um, it's a shame the Besamikdash will be built. What I'd like to do here is, let's just say, to Zion, and then we'll end, and you can stay here and say, Kinas all day long. I'm Zachor. Zachor. I'm not, I'm not going to um, interrupt anybody. I'm just going to finish talking. But um, there's so much we didn't talk about. We didn't talk about the Asar Rugei Malchus. We didn't talk about the. We didn't talk about the Crusades that the Kinos talk about. We didn't talk about Yermio going to um, Mars Hamachpela and how he davened at the Mars Hamachpela. We didn't speak about the Tziyunim, or Yehuda Levi, um, and all the rickshaws of Klai Yisrael. Well, we did talk about, to sum it up in a two sentences or so, what well, we did talk about 
is that it's all about having understanding our mandate in this world. That the Iker Chiddush of being Jewish is not even putting on tefillin or not moving muksa. This is all very important, Tariq Mitzvahs. But the Iker Chiddush is the Chiddush of Avram Avinu and Yitzhak and Yaakov. And in this world, there's only one Hashem. And the Beis HaMikdash was the temple of oneness. As long as we believe that there's only one Hashem and there's no other powers, there's no other politics, we're not saying Anna Malka, Anna Malka, like Melech Yisrael said, we have the Beis HaMikdash. As long as there's no other deserve, we can get that out of our world, we have the Beis HaMikdash. And when we have the Beis HaMikdash, we have the Shechina. And when we have the Shechina, push it, heaven touches earth. We have the Shechina. So all the, you know, like, is anybody going to disagree that the world is broken? Like, so messed up. So many things are messed up. Mashiach could come tomorrow, today. It's not so hard to understand and start to repair a broken world. Part of it will be the Binyan Beis HaMikdash, where, of course, Yerushalayim will be the center, and the bias will be a Beis Hashem, Kibesi, Beis Tevila, Yikari, L'cholamim, and all the Goyim, even, of course, the Jews, but all the Goyim will come and say, wow, this is the Beis Hashem, and all the Nevuahs of Yeshayahu will come true, that everyone will recognize and understand that they have to worship Hashem. That's what we talked about. And Tisha B'Av, as I said at the beginning, and I want to repeat, for me, you know, Karelai Moyed, um, I said it, I didn't mean it as a joke, I'm not telling jokes on Tisha B'Av. Tisha B'Av is my favorite ho- holiday, <laughs> my favorite Moyed. Because, not that I'm happy, and not that I like being depressed, or fasting, or sitting on the floor, but I feel it's the closest encounter with Hashem that we can get. Because we're talking about etzim hadover, what does it mean to be Jewish? And to the extent that we are Jewish, that's the extent that Mashiach will come. We have to be Jewish, our homes, our children. We have to daven for this and work hard for this. just want to end off with um, Kina Memhe all the way at the end. I always uh, speak out the, um, what I saw, B'Shem Reb Chaim Vatel, and now I just saw it from somebody else, Reb Ibn Shuib, but I don't know who says it, but uh, there's a, a mushal. You give a mushal to um, an almana that lost her husband, young Almana that lost her husband, and she had no way to bring up her kids, and she had no way to live, and she had no way to support her family or be happy. And she sat with her kids, and she told her kids that, let's not cry, because crying is not going to do anything. You know, like, if, uh, if we're just going to cry all day, like, we're not going to do anything just to become like a Nebuch and... Uh, you know, it doesn't bring even in Ruchni as anything good to cry. Al Tivke. But they did decide that on the yard site, a person has to cry, yeah? Like sometimes a person has to cry. So they decided that um, once a year on the yard site, we're going to allow ourselves to cry. The, the, even Shuib calls it the Yom Shehutter by Livkais. It's like one day a year, we're not allowed to cry all year round because if you cry, like we're not going to. We're not going to get anywhere. We're not allowed to do this all year. We're not allowed to do this only one day. You're allowed to do this. Um, and we're indulging ourselves in crying because we have to, I think we have to connect with Hashem in this way. You don't realize you can get, you could get, you could build such a wall around yourself, bigger than the wall of your shalim. You could build such a wall around yourself. You know, so here's an interesting thing that, um, you know, the, the, the Romans broke the wall. Zechariah says, Anavi, Prozois Teisha of Yerushalayim, get rid of the wall. <laughs> Prozois Teisha of Yerushalayim, time of the Yavonim, they left open the wall. The shot is that the, 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 it shouldn't be such, the, we have to be able to realize what our, what our tachlis is in this world. However you understand it for you and your family, for us, we have to understand our tachlis in the world because every time we go away from our tachlis, there's a korban. And every time we're back with our tachlis, there's binyan. Banoi v'charev, banoi v'charev. So the uh, mushal that they give to the once a year we can cry, we can connect to Hashem that way. 
we can have an encounter with Hashem also through crying, because by understanding, not being in the denial, by knocking down the walls, by knocking down the shell which stops us from feeling bechlal, you know, we don't feel anymore. Um, so, you know, as Tisha B'Av comes on, you know, now we're at Chatzos. And as Chatzos happens, you know, like we become like, I think, more of who we're supposed to be. That's why it's, it's, we, we, we're not eating, we're not comfortable, we're listening to me talk. Um, it's, it's not a comfortable situation. Um, you can only think about like, but like use the time, next few hours, use the time to connect with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And to get back to like what we really are, it's like it's like um, it's like taking a nature walk without all without your cell phone. Like that's what Tisha B'av is. Just just unplug. You unplug for a day. It's such an amazing thing. And today is the day to do that unplugging in a very very special way. Kibsula, Sak, like the Almana. It says here. So um, let's say this together. Memhe, we'll sing it together. Kimin and Kol Yisrael. Memhe. Elite <laughs>
Together for Simchas and Binyan Yerushalayim. <laughs> 